Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to another live watch along here on Celtics Digest. I'm Bruce Velez. In this episode, this live stream today, we'll be watching the Boston Celtics take on the Atlanta Hawks. If you guys do not know already, Drew Holiday, Derek White, and Xavier Tillman are all listed as out. Derek White recently just won the Eastern Conference Player of the Week and now will be taking a rest day. Drew Holiday still nurturing that shoulder injury and as you guys know the Atlanta Hawks are a team that are trying to fight or they're in the play-in spot and who knows if they want to make the playoffs or not but they have an abundance of injuries no Trey Young no Sadiq Bey no Jalen Johnson no Aneka Onyeka Okonwu so the Celtics should be able to get a victory tonight the starting five for tonight is a change up as well a new lineup tonight with Jason Tatum at point guard playing alongside Sam Hauser, Jalen Brown, Kristaps Porzingis, and Al Horford. It should be a fantastic game. If you guys are excited, if you guys want to ex experience a fantastic watch along, make sure to hit that like button, and let's get as many Celtics fans in here as possible, as we are going to be doing another live watch along. Got a comment here from John Carthy saying, let's go, let's go, John. Big night tonight for the Boston Celtics. We need them to get a big time W. Obviously, you know, we just clinched the first place in the Eastern Conference today, which was a huge thing for the Boston Celtics. They got home court advantage with still three weeks to go in the NBA season. Just shows you how dominant this team is top to bottom and shows you how great our bench depth is as well. You know, it's going to be a big time matchup and we need to get this win so we can win 10 straight. Celtics are also the only team to have a double digit win streak this season already having one at 11 now we'll be trying to get their second as they reach 10 straight if you guys are interested in the game if you guys are in want to know any questions any comments any reactions to the game drop them down below in the comment section here another comment here from john carthy saying who would you like to come up against first in the playoff so in my honest opinion i would love to play one of the two teams that are in the 9 10 hole I think if the Hawks were able to make the playoffs, possibly if some of these guys came back, they were to make a push in the plan. I think the Celtics would be able to, you know, handle them as easily as they did last year in a five game series. I think if the Celtics took on the Bulls, I know the Bulls are a pretty good clutch team in the fourth quarter. They showed that they could rally with the Celtics in the last matchup on Saturday. But I do believe that the Boston Celtics would be able to handle them as well. The Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers are, you know, the two teams that are a rumored to be around the 7-8 spot at this point. And I think that those would be, you know, good first round opponents. Obviously the Heat coming back from injuries, they're going to be a tough team to battle. They're going to, you know, want to get to still pr prove it's wrong to the Celtics and, you know, fight for, you know, a nice playoff spot. And obviously the 76ers without Joel Embiid be a tough matchup or without Joel Embiid be an easy matchup. But if Joel Embiid comes back, it'd definitely be a tough matchup for the Boston Celtics. Hopefully though, I'd like to play out of those two. I'd like to take play play Philly because in my honest opinion I don't think Joel Embiid is going to be that ready to go and be as dominant as he is if he does come back got a comment here from Habs Digest what's up Habs Digest if you guys don't want to watch some Canadians Montreal Canadiens hockey check them out what do you think the odds are the Celtics hit 65 wins this year I think the schedule makes it more than feasible I think that that is definitely possible Celtics currently are 57 and 14 Taking on these games versus the Hawks, I think those are two easy wins as well. We will look later into the schedule as well. I know that we have a matchup versus the Hornets, another matchup versus the Wizards. And even though those might be, you know, rest days for most of our starting five, our bench guys are cap or caliber ready to be able to get those type of wins. Guys like Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser, Luke Cornett have showed out in the starting lineup in the recent couple of games. And I easily think that they'll get to that 65 threshold which could be 70, that would be really, really cool, but 65 will definitely be a dominant season, and also, you know, they have one of the best net ratings ever in NBA history, which is a big time thing as well. We got Mavericks Digest in the house as well, what's up Mavericks Digest, big game tonight for you guys as well as you take on the Utah Jazz, and you guys are trying to, you know, compete for a playoff spot as well, I know you guys have been fluctuating from that 6th seed, now I think you guys are currently slated at the 8th seed, but it should, you know, be a great matchup for you guys tonight, wishing you guys the best of luck as well tonight in your guys' matchup. We got 10 concurrent viewers in here. Thank you guys so much for joining the stream, everybody, for being here tonight. The game hasn't even started yet, and we already got some great fan interaction, which is just amazing to see. 
big time game tonight as well let me know who you guys think in the comment section is going to have you know a surprising game for the boston celtics who's going to have you like your big prediction for a big time run because i think tonight i want to go with o'shea Brissett. he's really shown up for the boston celtics the last couple of games his hustle his energy is you know what you want to see out of a guy who plays at the end of the bench and it should be really really interesting to see how he kind of comes up and plays against a beaded down atlanta hawks team he'll also be one of the first guys coming off the bench as we know no drew holiday no Derek white i think the possibility of peyton pritchard um luke cornett and him being the first three off the bench are the most likely habs die just says i think those rest games are sometimes underrated by fans too not only does it ensure the starters are fresh, but it gives the bench guys some reps and chances to get into rhythm in the playoffs for sure. And we've seen with Joe Missoula the last couple games as well, Habs Digest, kind of work those guys and integrate them into the starting lineup. We've seen a mix of guys get a starting lineup job. We've seen Peyton Pritchard get the start versus Portland. We've seen Sam Hauser obviously getting the start tonight. We've also seen Tillman even get a, a starting spot versus Milwaukee, even though he was taken out, or sorry, Detroit, even though he was taken out of that starting spot versus Detroit, he still get did get a starting nod. We've seen Luke get in the starting lineup a bunch as well, and those games will definitely ramp them up because when we go deeper into the playoffs, I still, still think that Celtics have some great versatility. I think, you know, every guy 1 through 10, maybe of 11, O'Shea Brissett can, you know, spark some playoff light for the Boston Celtics in some minutes, but once we get deeper and deeper in the playoffs, they're obviously going to have to limit those guys down in their playing time, and Guys like Pritchard, guys like Court Hauser, and probably Luke Cornett are going to be getting the most run off that bench unit. Example two with Al Horford. So they need to definitely prioritize that and get those guys into some game time ready shape and get them into stamina shape as well. John Carthy says, thoughts on Tillman so far? I'm very high on Xavier Tillman. I think he's really, really fit in well with this Boston Celtics team. I've mentioned previously on past videos and stuff like that that I think he's a miniature Al Horford, and I mentioned that with uh, Josh and Isaac when we had our first breakdown here on Celtics Digest just when he got traded here. I thought he could be a miniature Al Horford if he gets that three-point ball down effectively. We've seen him try to use it in some games. He's missed some. He's made some. Obviously, I think it's going to come with time, but having this offseason where Tillman, we have the bird rights for him, I think it's exceptional that he gets into that gym and practices with Al Horford and learns to knock down that shot because Celtics have a steal with him being able to keep him not go over the tax bill not worry about anything in with the second apron and having just another key rotational guy who even if he does end up getting traded in a future year or you know does find a big role for the Boston Celtics that's successful for him and successful for this team with the new CBA we have to be able to retain some of these younger guys be able to keep them and make sure that they ensure that they're with our squad guys like Cornette, guys like Hauser, those are going to command some money, unfortunately, shortly for the Boston Celtics. And if they aren't able to pay him, having guys like Tillman already on the roster, not having to go find that replacement is huge. But as we get ready to get into this game, like I mentioned, the starting five is getting announced. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Sam Hauser, Al Horford, and Chris Stops Porzingis for the Boston Celtics should be a good one. Now, Derek White's getting a night off as well, which I think is a big thing for him. He definitely deserves that as well. For the Atlanta Hawks, DeJounte Murray, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Vit Krejci, DeAndre Hunter, and Clint Capella. Vit Krejci, I believe, is a Oklahoma City Thunder X player. I'm, that might be, I might be wrong on that, but I'm 99% sure. we got 12 concurrent viewers in the stream. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys are enjoying before the game, let's hit that like spike for our Boston Celtics as they have been heating up on a nine-game win streak looking to get it to 10 tonight versus the Atlanta Hawks on the road. We got the Atlanta Hawks wearing their City Edition jerseys. And I'm not going to lie. I don't like the font, but I do like the color of the jersey. That black and light blue is really, really cool. I like that, honestly. Tatum has gone from 35 to 38% from three this year. Similar to Luka has gone from 34 to 38%. Seems like our talented complimentary bigs really can help guys like this. Exactly. It's done it for the Mavericks, adding, you know, Daniel Gafford, adding guys like PJ Washington. They've been huge implements to that squad during their run post All-Star break. But adding guys like Kristaps Porzingis has done wonders as well for Jason Tatum, being that great versatile big. Being that guy who, you know, can be a great rim protector, also a great low post score, it's also opened the Celtics' versatility in using the offense. Vic Krejci? Exactly. He most definitely is a Thunder legend. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. But yeah, Vic Krejci. Here we go. 
got the tip off here oh, I'm gonna adjust this so we can get the time drop that down a little bit oh gotta adjust it there Celtics starting off with the ball Kristaps Porzingis going down low in the post misses tips it and gets the basket Celtics off to a hot start there with Kristaps Porzingis need some big time defense from this squad as well Foul here on the Celtics. John says that he's feeling Hauser's going to have a great game. He had a very good game in his last outing as well. So let's see. Hoping for a big outing as well. My last video talking about Sam Hauser mentioned how he's one of the best shooters in the NBA. And he truly has performed for that for the Boston Celtics this year. Shot from DeJounte Murray. Nope, but the Celtics able to get the rebound. No one in the paint for the Atlanta Hawks there. Big time, big time. Jalen Brown going to the post here. DeJounte Murray backing him down. Pass out. Steal. Get the ball back. Work DeJounte. Work him. Work DeJounte. Work him. Tatum. Hey, Jason Tatum. A little bit of patience. With a little bit of the lunge. A little. That's what we love to see. Hawks got the seventh best offensive rating compared to the Celtics, who have the best offensive rating in number two defense. Clint Capella able to get the layup there over Chris Dobbs, Porzingis. Jalen Brown. Working that working that dynamic duo with Chris Dobbs, Porzingis. Celtics going early big to Chris Dobbs here. Two shots. Are the first three he misses, but they're really working in him, working him in the offense. They've been doing that the last couple of games. Dejounte for three, and he misses. Tatum gets the rebound. Like I mentioned, the Celtics have a one twenty two point five offense rating, the best in the NBA. Not Celtics related, but if you're the Hawks, do you trade Trey and try to win with Dejounte, or trade Dejounte, or neither, or both? <laughs> um. So I think that if you're the Atlanta Hawks, I think you tried to trade DeJounte Murray at the offseason or throughout the regular season and you didn't get anything that you realistically wanted. Therefore, I think the rumors of Trey being most available is what they want to do and kind of reset with Jalen Johnson. I think trading Trey Young will get you the best assets and the most value back. And if you don't like the value that you're getting for DeJounte, I think the move is trading Trey Young for sure. But in my honest opinion... I think moving DeJounte would be the best move for the organization because I still believe in Trey Young and I still think he could be a leader for this squad. I just don't know if the Hawks realistically want what they're going to get back for DeJounte, even though DeJounte has been an underrated player. And since he's went to Atlanta, yeah, maybe his defensive numbers have dropped. He hasn't looked the best next to Trey Young, but that's because there's another point guard with him. And we all know that once he moves on and goes to another lineup by himself, he's still going to be maybe not hit that excellent player that he was, but still be a star player in the NBA and still be a top-tier guard. But the guard the guard rotation in the NBA is very, very tough to rank because there's guys like Jalen Brunson who are absolutely fantastic at the guard rotation and just amazing players, but it's it's just, you know, hard to rank them. Trade to the trade to the Spurs for cheap. That's that's the place that I would like to see him. Either the Spurs or the Magic, I think, would be the best option. I think the pick and roll with Victor Wembanyama and adding, you know, Trey Young to a lineup with like adding the Spurs, getting the best assister in the entire NBA, the guy that averages the most assists, just would do wonders to Victor Wembanyama and excelling their game. And if the Spurs want to, you know, rapidly build this tank that ESPN wants to say, then I guess it would help them out as well. The Hawks get a basket there if Tatum makes his free throws. Jalen Brown to the rack. Misses as Clint Capella gets the rebound. DeJounte back to Vic Krejci with a little pump. A little fake, but nope. Kristaps Sporzingis gets a called foul there on Clint Capella, but it looks like he wanted a blocking call instead. Tatum running PG, I think, is definitely something interesting to talk about as well, just because he's a he's never really ran that position before. People want to talk about how he can't 
he's brought in the ball before. He's been able to be a, a decent point guard and run the offense for the Celtics, but he hasn't really played point guard for us this season. So I think this is a cool lineup to run, a very big lineup as well. With the Hawks running, I mean, Bogdan's pretty big as well. He's 6'8", 6'7", I believe. Vic Krejci guarding Tatum at half court. T Snizzle is here. T Snizzle, one of our, you know, most dedicated viewers at the stream. What's up, T Snizzle? Glad you could join us here. Kristaps Porzingis down low. Kristaps Porzingis with the easy basket. Celtics feeding Kristaps Porzingis, and it's doing wonders for the team tonight. Bogdan Bogdanovich, Bogdan Bogdanovich, three, miss. As Al Horford gets the rebound. Tatum. Brown, Brown, looking for Hauser. Let's get a Hauser three. Let's get a Hauser three. Brown for three. Woo! Jalen Brown for three. Let's go. He's keeping up that hot streak. Shout out T Snizzle. Exactly Habs Digest. Shout out T Snizzle. Shout out T Snizzle. He's just chilling. Hoping you have a good night. Hope you're enjoying the game tonight as much as we are. We're going to have a fantastic one. Jalen Brown with an absolutely fantastic bucket, though. And he makes the free throw big time. Big time. There we go. Jalen Brown playing some nice defense as well on the other side. Jalen Brown with another steal. Jalen Brown with a... Jalen Brown fakes you with the dunk and gets the layup. Jalen Brown taking over that last couple of seconds. As you guys already know, he's leading the league in first quarter points. Dominant in the first half. Averaging around 20 points in the first half since All-Star break. He really wants to take command. Really jumpstart the Celtics offense in games like this. And he's doing that again tonight. The Celtics go on a little bit of a streak there. A little bit of a run. Jalen Brown gets a three-pointer with a and one to get four points and then gets a steal to finish at the rack six points in the spanner of like 30 seconds for Jalen brown he is absolutely cooking for the celtics yes t snizzle Jalen brown Jalen brown and Dwayne dodson says go seize let's go seize let's go seize he yeah oh yeah he's definitely my fave he's one of my faves too i i really really frustrated and you want to talk to Josh, you can talk to Isaac. I was saying that they need to keep Jalen Brown. They needed to extend him in the offseason because he was a big-time player for the Celtics. And yeah, he had his inconsistencies in the playoff last year, but that was just one playoff series. And I know a lot of national media is hyped up around that playoff series, wants to take down Jalen Brown, but he was deserving of that money. And it's clearly shown since the post-All-Star break that Jalen Browner haters have been absolutely silent. You haven't seen them on Twitter. You haven't seen them on Instagram. No other fan bases are poking at him because other people, when they boast about him and they do poke at him, it's just Celtics fans ravaging and ramping on them, proving that those people are casuals and don't watch the game. He's just ascending as another player. And it's crazy to think that a player that averaged 24 points, 50% from the field, around 40% from three with five rebounds and five assists, could tear it up to another notch and do it as a superstar player. And it's absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Brown is great. Exactly, Dwayne Dodson. He has been on fire for this team, legitimately. Like, like as hot as these flames. Like, like oh, it just makes me so happy because he just proves all the doubters wrong. He's a guy that, you know, does a lot for the city as well. I don't know if you guys are from the Boston area. You guys don't really know, but he does so much for the city. He wants to be a great role model, great individual. He is that guy. And the fact that he can do that on the court and off the court for the Celtics team Kudos to him, man. Charles Miller's here again. Charles, what's good? Charles, another big-time supporter of the streams, always tuning in with like, T-Snizzle. We always appreciate you guys being here. But he says he's here to watch me tonight from home, and I'm sounding good. Let's go. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate that. I appreciate that like always, man. Let's get me to switch with Abby Chin on the TV. Let's let's get that swap going. Let's let's call up NBC Sports Boston. We can, we can do a little switcheroo. I, 
Dwayne, Dwayne's here every game as well. Dwayne, thank you, Dwayne. Thank you, thank you. We appreciate it. No, from Kansas. We, oh yeah, I forgot you were from Kansas. We talked about this. We talked about this the other day when we talked about the radio. I'm so sorry, and I'm that you're the Jayhawks lost to Gonzaga. I know that they were without one of their main players. But here we go. Celtics on an 8-0 run, looking to play some good defense. Capella. Oh, Clint Capella, a beast. He's a beast, man. He should be a guy on the trade block next year if the Hawks look to blow things up. Jalen Brown looking to attack the rim. This is going to be a big JB game. I feel like Jason Tatum is just going to play off of him. Maybe turn up in the third quarter. That's when JT likes to get hot. But I think he's just going to play off Jalen Brown, be a big-time assister, big-time rebounder guy tonight. Kickball violation there from Chris Knapp's Porzingis. Here we go. Inbound here. It's DeJounte. DeJounte with a floater miss. Porzingis tipping around the rebound. Celtics ball. Let's go. Let's go. Jason Tatum bringing the ball up. The point guard, Jason Tatum. Let's see him do some work. Jason Tatum for three? Yes, sir. Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum. Maybe it's going to be a, a Jays game. I don't know. I'm just hoping that the offense comes out on fire. Two for two for three tonight. The Hawks with no Trey Young, their best three-point shooter. 0 for three. As I say that, they make one. So, should have put my tongue away there. DeAndre Hunter hits a corner three. Jinxed it. Got Jalen Brown going down the post. Getting by Bogdan Bogdanovich with ease with a little spin move. Nice work, Jalen Brown, man. It's really nice to have the Jays really realize that they excel in different parts of the game and have them utilize that as well. Great defense as well from Horford and Chris Stops. Great defense. The double big lineup is succeeding. Chris Stops goes to... <laughs> Chris Stops throws it off his leg, looking for the kickball violation as he got. <laughs> and he's he gets the violation before his leg. <laughs> but yeah, I really like how... Jalen Brown has really excelled for the Boston Celtics as that drive to the rack score, the guy who's going to finish at the rim, while Jason Tatum is that other catch and shoot, three point shooting guy. They really polished each other's games, and you know, Jalen Brown isn't depending on the three ball as much as he has been in the past. Jason Tatum getting to the rack, though, with ease. Jason Tatum and one. Jason Tatum. Let's go. Come on, Bean Town. Let's go, Bean Town. Let's go, Bean Town. I watched every game on satellite in the 80s. Congratulate that. Kudos to you, Charles. That that gives a lot of credit. I, I give you. You are a dead you are a dedicated Celtics fan. You might not be in Boston, but man oh man, you are a dedicated green green giant. That's what we're gonna call ourselves. The green giants over here. If you think you a better name, give me a better name. Jason Tatum, though, at the free throw line, makes the free throw. How you know I'm a Boston native? We got the Newberry Comics Cup with with Raspberry Pure Leaf. No shout out to Raspberry Pure Leaf, but. We got the Pure Leaf Raspberry. We got the Newberry Comics Cup. Great defense from Pritchard as well. There's nobody under 6'7 on the court. Unfortunately, now, now that Peyton Pritchard is on the court, he is there, but. People knocking Peyton Pritchard for not being great defensively don't see the hustle. Don't see the energy that this guy brings. Look at that last play right there. Right through the screen, trying to get that board. We got, trying to get the steal. We got another, oh, sorry. We got another comment. Loop A or Lupe A with the, with the, with the Sam Rocks. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Thanks for coming out to the stream tonight. Like I mentioned, we got the nine viewers. If you guys are enjoying the stream, hit that like button. We appreciate you guys. Everybody tuning in. DeAndre Hunter with the ball. Looking to go at the rim, but Hauser and Brown are not going to let him get there. Brown dribbling through the legs. Brown back to Tatum. Tatum going to the rack. Now Jason Tatum's playing some bully ball. Oh, looking for a foul call. Does not get one. Hawks on the other end. DeJounte with a little floater on Hauser. He makes it. Okay. Pritchard bringing the ball up. Pritchard with a nice screen from Porzingis a little bit. 
Porzingis going to lurk down low in the post with Vit Krejci. Two on him. Draw the attention away. Pritchard back to Porzingis. Porzingis with the slam. All three of the main the main trio tonight from the starting lineup are excelling tonight. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and Chris Dobbs. Celtics dominating with points in the paint. 14-8 to eight compared to the Atlanta Hawks. Three ball here from DeJounte off the front of the rim. Porzingis falls. No foul call. Pritchard going to the rack on... Looks like Vic Krejci, or Garrison Matthews, excuse me. Porzingis with the foul call driving to the rack. Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne Dodson, excuse me. I live in upstate New York on a farm in the 80s. And we got Channel 2 from Boston. That's amazing. That's how you can know, you know, you could be a huge Celtics fan. Yeah, you're a little bit ahead of me, I think. I got the game on a stream here from Xfinity Stream on my TV. I do not have the uh, cable box set up in my room. It is currently in the living room where my dog would be barking and you would not be able to hear me at all. But we got some big to Ooh! Shea Brissett getting some minutes. This is the guy that I was hyping up in the pregame. Hyped him up on Twitter as well. If you guys aren't following us on Twitter, make sure to follow us over there if you guys have one. But I was talking to another Celtics page over there about Shea Brissett. I would love to see him get some big-time minutes. He's played a big energy role for the Celtics, getting some huge offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds and keeping this team hyped up in that back-to-back -back versus Detroit and Chicago, and he's another, you know, ultimate stay-ready guy, a guy who comes in, and even he's playing two to three minutes, hypes up the Celtics, gets them pumped up, love to see his energy, he brings it his all, he goes balls to the wall 100% every time he's out on the court, and that's what you love to see, here we go with the Celtics, Pritchard, nice pass to Brissett, kick to Brown, for three, yes sir, Jalen Brown, go here we go Jalen Brown 11 points already Jalen Brown with another steal Jalen Brown with the ooh, almost gets the dunk definitely should have got a foul call there definitely should have got a foul call there talk yo smack JB talk yo smack JB talk yo smack JB Celtics on a 14 to 4 run and as I say that they shoot in a three Vic Krejci Dominique sounds mad tonight. Unfortunately, I don't have the volume on for the game, but I can understand why he would be he would be frustrated. But Dominique's a guy that recognizes great talent. He recognizes the Jays are are a good squad, and without Trey Young, this team shouldn't expect to you know compete. Jalen Brown with a big heat check right there. That was a deep three. Bruno Fernando, ex Boston Celtic. Celtic timeout. We have another timeout here for the Celtics. Again, if you guys are enjoying the stream, make sure to hit that like button. We've got seven total likes I just checked. Eight concurrent viewers at the moment. We've had a total of 90. I'm trying to get the streams, trying to get this community building. So if you guys do enjoy the streams, make sure to hit that like button and support us. If you guys missed our video earlier today as well, we had one talking about a massive Drew Holiday update, injury update. I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek here, but basically, he'll be okay. He said that it's nothing really to worry about this whole dead arm thing that he that the reporters are coming out and we know we made a video about it as well where I said I think he'll be he's just resting and it's not as serious. It's really not. He got shoot around, he got shots up tonight versus the Atlanta Hawks in Atlanta. He got shots up versus the Chicago Bulls on Saturday as on Saturday afternoon as well before that game. So he is trying to work his way back up and he is trying to, you know, get his way into this um uh, playoffs uh, rotation and be fine for that. Um, ultimately, I think it's just rest. I don't think it's that much of an issue. We saw with Kristaps Porzingis as well that he took a little bit of rest and then he came out and said, I could have played. I just wanted to rest. I don't think it's that with Drew Holiday. I do think that there's a little bit of a lingering issue, but I do believe that, you know, that he will be A-OK. -okay. He'll be ready for the playoffs and he, you know, is a big time component for this Celtics offense and defense and resting him now is the best case scenario. Jalen Brown is very underrated, says T-Stencil. I definitely agree. A, a player in Jalen Brown is very, very hard to come by. 
dominant on both sides of the floor. You can say that he has not the greatest left hand, but he's worked on that and he's, you know, polished it this year, you know, showing off in dunks, showing off in cool 316 plays. He definitely has worked on that. He definitely also um, has been fantastic on the defensive side of the ball. He claims that he wants to make all defensive team. He might make an all defensive team. I don't know. There's a lot of great defensive players, but he makes sure to take the assignment of the best opposing offensive score if Drew Holiday, if Derek Knight White is not taking them. So he is definitely underrated and I think worth that money. Curb Stomp in the Hawks. Sheesh, says Mavericks Digest. Exactly. The Celtics don't win it all this year. Do you blow it up? I don't think so. I think that we can run it one more time. I think that there'll be a lot of rumors about it, but bringing in, it is definitely a championship or bust year. Definitely, you know, we need to win this championship. We have our eyes on it. And if we do come up short, it will be a disappointing season. But I do think that Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, yeah, they played six years together, or I think, I believe, or five years together. They are, you know, have that chemistry brewing. And I think that we could give it one more shot one more shot after after that year though maybe it is time to blow it up maybe it is time to finally let go of Jalen Brown because we'll have to extend guys like Derek White keep guys like Drew Holiday pay Jason Tatum maybe worry about some of our role players we could lose guys like Sam Hauser have to trade Pete and Pritchard it all depends on Al Horford's contract situation as well how long does he want to stay in Boston I love the stories about Bird and uh dominique battles in the 80s yes yes they were it was a it was a it was a bit of a rivalry between the celtics and the hawks for a bit peyton pritchard for three yes sir starting off hot again peyton pritchard if you want to be like drake you call him crypto scammer but peyton pritchard on fire again proving that he can be a starter in this league like i keep mentioning celtics have seven to eight players on this team that could be key starters Playing some great defense as well as Peyton Pritchard. Fighting through screens. Fighting through stuff. Hawks make a big time three there. In the corner from Garrison Matthews. But. Pritchard running that point guard. With a nice little lob to Porzingis. Not even a lob. Just a little pass. And Porzingis just tip. I'll just tip. Porzingis 10 points tonight. Big time performance in his comeback game. That's what the Celtics do. Whenever Kristaps Porzingis come back from injury, their main game plan is, all right, we're going to play through this man. We're going to just give him as many touches as we can. Let's get him back into this offense. Let's get him feeling comfortable again. And he succeeds in it. He's been truly a game changer. A guy who, at the beginning, when we were training for him, at the, when the rumors started, I was like, how are we going to get this guy? What are we giving up? But... I'm glad it all happened. I, Looking back on it, my, my thoughts and comments back then were not what I'm feeling right now. Here we go. Celtics playing. It's a pretty solid defense as well. Jason Tatum. And no, not at the rack. Met by Vic Krejci. Vic Krejci's hit some shots as well. Blocked by Tatum. And we're not going to call that an up and down? We're not going to call that an up and down? We're not going to call that an up and down? Bruno Fernando gets blocked. And then goes right back up with it. What the? What? <laughs> All right. Thank you. You got a jump ball. Tatum with another, with a win off the tip. That's big. So the fourth quarter is winding, our first quarter, excuse me, is winding down here. Peyton Pritchard. Yes, sir. Peyton Pritchard with a nice, with a nice shot right there. That's what we love to see. Peyton Pritchard is absolutely on fire for the Boston Celtics. Since he's been, you know, given that starting nod versus Portland, he's really stepped up. Playing some hard defense right there as well with Luke Cornett. Let's go. Another pass out to Pritchard. Another beautiful pass to Sfee. 
Again, playmaking abilities, just tuning up as well. Back out to Tatum for three. Yes, sir! Just, I just messed up my headphones with the mic I just celebrated so hard. But yes, sir! Stand up! 20-point lead. I know the Hawks have no Trey Young, but goddamn! We might be resting our boys. We might be resting our boys. We're set with great defense! Great defense! Let's go. Let's go. Come on, let's hit another shot. Let's hit another shot. Jason Tatum goes for the screen. Pritchard, kick out to Cornette. Cornette, yes sir! Pritchard making the smart plays. Woo! And the Celtics fight on defense. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, Speed's even fighting. Let's go. 22-point lead at the end of the first quarter. Let's go. Drop some likes in the chat for the Celtics. Spam some W's because it's getting nuts. Let's go. Let me get the towel. I got the towel here from last game. It's the, let me get it all set up. I got the, the different here because it's different in Boston, baby. Yes, sir! Let's go! Let's go! Celtics playing absolutely huge tonight in a game where, again, they could lose this game and be A-OK. -okay. They got that first seed wrapped up. They're playing hard-nosed defense. Not letting the Hawks get nothing. Nothing! This is what I love to see from this Celtics squad. We got some comments here to react to. Sorry that I missed them, but Jimmy J's here. Welcome back, Jimmy J. We've seen you in the last couple streams. Thanks for always popping out. Thanks for commenting. But yeah, Weld Oil Machine, the green machine, the green giants, the Celtics are cooking. PP Midrange has been on fire. Dude, Peyton Pritchard, he's absolutely ridiculous at offense. Transforming that game, like, I'm not going to lie. As a Celtics fan, we've known he'd be able to do some mid-range stuff. You know, been able to work with the ball in his hands, being an effective playmaker. But for the rest of the people to be able to see that Peyton Pritchard's game is excelling and he's just being able to take drives on bigger dudes and make tough finishes at the rack has exponentially shot his game up so much better. 40 bomb. We're probably going to get a 40 bomb. We're already up, you know, 22 points at the end of the first quarter. Come up with another dominant second quarter. Hopefully, we, we, we pray, we cross our fingers. No choke in the second quarter here. We don't need a, a light quarter. But again, another high offensive quarter for the Boston Celtics here. Hitting some big time shots. These threes are firing for us tonight. If we can keep these threes on a cylinder, we're going to be a-okay. We play the Timberwolves in the finals. I'll feel more comfortable. Timberwolves will be a good matchup. I know they lost Carl Anthony Towns back. It's going to be, you know, a little bit of a tough one. But they got a really good defense. And the Celtics offense is solid. But both of our matchups have gone to overtime. I'm not sleeping on the Timberwolves. But Jimmy J says, give us the Hawks round one. Might be four blowouts. I was mentioning earlier our boy... Our boy up in the car on the top, John Carthy, asked us who we would like to see in the first round. I was saying that the Boston Celtics would love to play a team like the Hawks or the Bulls over the Heat and the Sixers, and hopefully that can happen. Lupe A, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We got comments, more comments. A from T Snizzle, Charles Miller spamming the likes, spamming the shamrocks. Jimmy J says, What's up? What's up, my guy? Again, great to see you tonight. Great to have you. Dwayne with the 44. Dwayne with the 44. Sfee, Sfee. Pritchard, oh my god, the ball movement? The ball movement? To Sfee? To Sfee? To Sfee! To Sfee! The Celtics are on fire tonight from three! They're not missing! We are going to play the Hawks or the Bulls. We desperately need that. We want that. We want that. Six for eight from three-point range. Another good defensive stop. Jason Tatum, dunk! Time out! Let's go already. Less than a minute to go. Quinn Snyder says, cut the BS. Cut that BS. Not happening. Cut that BS. Nah, dude. We're coming out on fire. We got everybody playing great. 
It's going to be another big dub here for the Celtics. It's going to be another good one. I'm feeling it. Going for that 10 straight game. Like I mentioned, let's look Let's look and see. It's different here. It's different here. It's different here. Look at this. There's I, I, this is gonna be a little this is gonna be a little hard. Not gonna lie, but this is the wrong finger. So sorry. No, no, no. Um, this guy, this guy right here, and this guy right here. They're both they're both out. This guy is taking a rest day after he played five games in seven days and won Eastern Conference Player of the Week and absolutely tore up the squad and says that he's a top 100 player and proves it this season. And this guy is being very unselfish and taking some rest and working out on his shoulder. And the Celtics still, still have a 27, 27 point lead. Who's stopping us? Who's stopping us? Who's stopping us? Who's stopping us? I'm kidding. There are going to be some tough matchups. The Bucks are going to be a tough matchup. The Heat. Not going to lie, going to be a tough matchup if the things start clicking. But the Knicks, even, too. I think the Knicks got to, got to, got to, if they get healthy. But, like we know, the Celtics. How many home losses do they have versus Eastern Conference opponents? Jake Lehman, zero. They got none. So, the only good thing is that I feel confident going into a Game 7. The Celtics... Have to ever worry about a fear like that. Ever have to be scared going into a Game 7. They got home court advantage, and they have yet to lose versus somebody at home in the Eastern Conference. The three losses that they have at home to the Los Angeles Lakers with no AD and no LeBron James. Very sad game, but Austin Reeves shot 70% from three-point range. The Denver Nuggets, who beat us at home. And I'm not going to lie, I don't know the other one off the top of my head. I thought it was the Minnesota Timberwolves, but I believe that we lost to them on the road now that I do think about it. If you guys do know that third road loss, drop it down in the comment section. I'm sorry, I thought I, thought I knew it. I, I believe, because I know that the Timberwolves two games were both overtime games. We won one, we lost one. I believe the one that we did win was at home, but I do not remember. But here we go. Celtics are back here. Again, Celtics are back. We are back, back, back. Brissett playing some big time defense. Pritchard playing some defense. Missed three. Not able to box out Bruno Fernando. Cornet plays some good defense there. Again, Cornet's excelling. Has really excelled. Really excelled. Sixth time this season the Celtics have scored 44 points, at least in the first quarter. And it was the fourth time this month. Let's go. But yeah, I'd love to see some big time performances from some of our bench guys tonight. Maybe a J.D. Davidson. Maybe some name is Kada. Name is Kada. For all our Portuguese fans out there. Maybe some... Jaden Springer, he got his, you know, big time playing versus the Pistons on Friday, I believe, which was a good a good showing from him. And even in Saturday's game, he got the 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 couple seconds to guard DeMar DeRozan at half court, and he did a fantastic job in, you know, creating no points and creating some fluster for the Chicago Bulls, which was fantastic to see out of a guy like him. A guy, another one, stay ready. Gotta stay ready. Bruno Fernando, though, ex-Boston Celtic, does miss the free throw for the Atlanta Hawks. Trying to stay up to date on the, you know, Twitter sphere over here with the Boston Celtics. If you guys want to check us out over on the Twitter sphere, make sure to follow us over there. Again, we also have the Discord. Check us out over there as well. Though I did change the link in the last description of the video, so you might you might be able to join. I found out you got to change it every week, which is you know a little bit tough, but we'll definitely be working on that to make sure more people join. Celtics we're looking to try to get this ball movement going again, though. After Bruno Fernando does make one at the line. Trying to run maybe a trap on. They look like they want to run a trap on Tatum. Then Tatum gets the baited foul call there. Like I said, let us know your thoughts in down below in the comment section. How you guys are feeling about the game. Pritchard with a deep three off the inbound and misses. Probably with the short shot clock. Had to get off. Celtics now 25 and a half 
money spread and point line winners. Oh, the Hawks are having some flustering offense tonight. Celtics not even giving them that much pressure there. and That's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, we're going to be checking out the Twitter here. Brizzy is coming out. That was the Celtics' ninth 40-point 40, 40, 40 first quarter this season. Yeah, swinging of the basketball is perfect tonight. The ball movement is killer. And the Celtics, you know, last game versus the Chicago Bulls, I believe, or it was the Pistons, they had less assists, which was crazy. Jason Tatum, perfect mid-range. Jason Tatum heating up. And that's the thing, too. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, when one of them's not playing, the other one goes off. When one of them's not on the court, they easily command the court, prove that they can be that, you know, start a takeover, which I think has really helped out in their success this season. It's not them, you know, playing alongside of each other and both of them have to go for 20 or 25. They both get individually their units of run with the bench players mixed in or other starters mixed in, and it allows for each of them to, you know, kind of control and take over the game for the Boston Celtics in their individual way. Jason Tatum obviously can drive and score at the rim. Both players can, you know, do that and shoot the three-point ball. We all know Tatum heavily prioritizes that shot creator and that shot taking where Jalen Brown prioritizes getting to the rack. Peyton Pritchard with the missed shot there, though, off of Jason Tatum. Celtics, seven points in the first couple of minutes here. Peyton Pritchard with a rebound, though. See, again, perfect position for Peyton Pritchard. Always there to hustle and get those extra intangible and get those, you know, extra stats, which you love to see. I have a guy who was, you know, 6'1", 6'2". Horford with a nice pass trying to get it to Cornette, but then again, Svee with the save, and Cornette with another finish around the rim. Big-time finish for Luke Cornette there. And the Hawks hit a three, but the Celtics have three players already in the first quarter with double digits with Tatum, Brown, and Porzingis. It's really, really great as well. The only ones in the starting lineup who have scored is Horford. Never mind. Horford gets his first basket down below. Really weak interior defense by the Atlanta Hawks tonight. No paint presence, no ability to stop. With Clint Capella not out there, it's really tough for them. No Ed Mekong Kongu as well, their backup. Another three for the Hawks as they, you know, trying to crawl back with that type of play. Bogdan Bogdanovich, uh, Vic Krejci, Garrison, Ma Garrison Matthews, excuse me. They've hit some big-time threes for the for the Hawks here. But, again, the Celtics just inching away, scoring at the basket, still creating a lead. Jason Tatum to the rack and gets fouled. Like I mentioned, for the Hawks, no one has had over... Seven points. Deion, DeJounte Murray has six. For the Boston Celtics, they have three starters with over 10 points. Celtics shooting 65% from the field, 55% from three-point range, 100% from the free throw. 12 assists, 11 total rebounds, six fast break points with three steals, two blocks, and 10 defensive rebounds with nine points on turnovers. The only category they are losing on the NBA app is the offensive rebounds, 2-1, to one, which is not that bad for the Boston Celtics, as usually they lose that in a bigger category. It's They usually don't get to control that. Oh my, oh my, oh my. I am so sorry. I gotta, I gotta fix this because... I have the chats here popped up. I don't see any chats. And then, boom, I got 50, 60 chats. So, again, I, I am apologizing. I am love Svi. We do love Svi. We're about to have seven players in double figures. Let's hope. Just checking in and we up 27. Yes, sir, DB. We are killing it with the Boston Celtics tonight. We are on fire. And another thing that the Celtics are doing, as I'm right here, nine for nine from the free throw range. That's absolutely fantastic. Again, sorry with the slacking on the chat. There's sometimes where it loads, sometimes where it doesn't load. I got the window popped up here and it sometimes doesn't work. Oh my God. Okay. DeAndre Hunter gets the put back after no box out, but almost missed it again. Svee sure helped the Jayhawks. He was a big contributor for the Jayhawks. I really did like him over there. And again, Another Jayhawk that I do like, Christian Braun. Very, very talented. And Grady Dick's been pretty solid for the Raptors over there in camp for this year as well. Mean Green, baby. Yes, sir. DB, Jason Tatum, air ball. You love the towel. Lupe, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. Yeah, we got the towel here. We didn't attend the game, but my my family member got me the towel. And if you guys can see, I'm, I think I believe I'm pointing at it right here. We have the J.U. and Brown towel from the playoff series last year my friend went to that game handed me this towel oh, man 
shout out to my family, shout out to my friends. They know I'm a huge diehard Celtics fan. They know that this is my passion. This is what I want to do for my career. They always help me out. They always get me there. And again, shout out to them as always. Because without them, without you guys either as well, we would not be here. No D White. Just notice, yeah, Jimmy J. No D White tonight. I know, shockingly, he is taking a little bit of rest tonight after winning that Eastern Conference Player of the Week, playing in five games in seven days. The only consistent starter to do that. Definitely takes a toll on his body. And the Celtics want to make sure that he got that well-deserved rest after winning that Eastern Conference Player of the Week. Jason Tatum, though, did miss that first free throw. Uh, the only hard game is going to be the Pelicans because we didn't have Porzingis, so we should destroy them. Pelicans was a good matchup. Last time we played, like you mentioned, no Porzingis, but they really don't have a big paint presence as well. Let's see. Celtics playing some big time defense here. Quinka Pelligan and stopped by Porzingis. Rebound for number 33. I'm sorry. I don't know who that is. I got to learn some of these guys from the Atlanta Hawks. I don't be watching the Atlanta Hawks. Great ball movement again. Hauser for three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. East won't be easy, but first round should be. But of course, Heat and Sixers fans think they can take us. That's, what the, that's the thing. The Heat. They are very fluctuating on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Once playoff time comes, when they shorten their lineups, they might be able to succeed, but I'm not really scared. With Joel Embiid as well, we've mentioned this a little bit earlier, do we really think he's going to be 100% ready to go when he comes out of sitting 30, 40 games? I don't know how he's going to respond. Like, There's a lot of rumors that you know coming back from this injury, even if he does come back in the regular season, he might not be fully ready to go. Also, like, if they do rest him to playoffs, is he going to be fully 100% and ready to go? There's a lot of question marks with Philly. And who's to say that if they don't use Embiid in the plan, they even make it? We got T. Snizzle saying he's going to be here after halftime or as soon as the third quarter. Again, we appreciate that. So go let your phone, you know, go charge. Lupe with the fire. We appreciate it. Sam Hauser again. Misses Drew Holiday standing up trying to get that. Hauser is incredible, exactly. Undrafted gold. You are not wrong, Jimmy J, man. He is a sniper. A steal. We have him on a $2 million club option. Absolutely fantastic for the Celtics. Quinn Capello, though, absolutely bodying the Boston Celtics in tonight's efforts. Really dominating down low for them. Without him, though, there's been no succeeding for them in the down low post as Jason Tatum gets an absolute perfect lob to Kristaps Porzingis. Celtics have more points in the paint than the Hawks, 26 to 18. And at this very moment, 63 to 36, the inverse of the score. Jason Tatum with another tough finish. Jason Tatum. Making Bogdan Bogdanovich look like his baby brother as he gets to the rack. DeJounte Murray misses. Again, Clint Capella dominating on these boards. Oh, rebounding that ball over Kristaps Porzingis is, is one hard thing. But Jason Tatum playing some fantastic defense on the steal over Vic Krejci. Gets fouled. We can score 80 if we want. For sure. We're definitely going to eclipse 80, I believe, by this halftime. We're, we're only... We have five minutes left. We, we're a little bit over half. We easily got that 80, which is, again, crazy to think. This game can be possibly a game where we score 150 points. Let's just take that and sit that back. I was at the game where they played versus the Pacers where they did break the franchise record at home. Very, very excited to be at that game. That was fantastic to see from this offensive side. But if we can do that again, even at a better clip, gearing up for the playoffs too is amazing. Hauser again misses the three. And the Hawks get a little bit of a finish at the at the rim there with no one other than Clint Capella. <laughs> Too much on Embiid's shoulders. Philly depending on healed Lowry Batum and Ubre. Embiid can't perform miracles. LOL. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Tyrese is a very good skilled player. I like Tyrese Maxey, even though, because I like Kentucky, I like their players. Um, Buddy Heald's a pretty good shooter, but they are relying a lot on him. Kyle Lowry is a good bench point guard, but I don't rely most of my pressure on him. And Batum and Oubre, I don't know. Oubre could be a nice scorer, but Batum, I don't know. But Al Horford, 
Sorry to cut you off there. Sorry to cut that off. Just got a fantastic three-pointer. Missed the three. Chris Dabrowski tips it right back to him. Alfred catch and shoot again. Makes it in front of the Celtics bench. That's ecstatic. Bojan Bogdan Bogdanovich makes another basket though at the rim. Uh, Celtics want to take it a little bit slower. Jalen Brown for three misses. Drew Holiday. Again, this is what I love. This is what I love to see. Drew Holiday dripped out in his little. I think want to call it brown and orange outfit. You can correct me if I'm wrong here. But look at him. He's every three the Celtics are taking. He's standing up. He wants to see. He's peeking over the rim. Hey, are we making it? Hey, are we making it? That's a team player. That's a guy you want. That's a guy that you want to keep long term. A guy that they'll definitely be working to get an extension done with in April. And a bad turnover there from the Celtics on the inbound. DeJounte Murray gives it to Quinn Capella. And Joe Mazzulla has had enough here. Calls a timeout. 68-42. to 42. The Celtics up 26 points. Only up four more than they were at the beginning. The Celtics were on a bigger bit of a run. The Hawks have worked it back a little bit. So Joe Mazzulla definitely wants to set some things straight. But the Celtics here playing great defense besides those last couple of minutes. Quinn Capella been really the only key contributor for them. They're being able to out-rebound us. Be able to do that as well. But you got to respect that with Clint Capella. Celtics got to do a little better on the boxing out. But on offense tonight, Jalen Brown, Kristaps Porzingis, Jason Tatum, all heating up. Guys like Sam Hauser has hit some big time shots. Peyton Pritchard has, been, has hit some big time shots as well. And that's what you just, again, these are the things that I love to see. These are my favorite things. Pacers possible round one. Seeds six to eight look tougher than seeds three to five, in my opinion, if Embiid returns. That's that's what I'm saying. That's that's what I'm saying. Uh, seeds, I'd rather play Orlando. I know that they were around the playing spot about a month ago, and I was like, hmm, Celtics play Orlando. I think we'll go into a five game series. It'll be a good matchup. That's the team that I like to play. Obviously, Cleveland went on that huge win streak, but if they had you know kind of fallen off a bit when, uh, excuse me, Darius Garland and Evan Mobley got injured. I thought they would have been a nice first-round matchup for the Boston Celtics. I think we would have been able to handle them a little bit easier. But like you mentioned, I think the Knicks, I think that the... Uh, the Knicks, I think, could be a tough matchup for the Celtics, depending if they're healthy or not. But it's just scary. But who knows? A team like the Bulls or the Hawks could get an upset versus a team like Miami or a team versus... Or a team like, uh, excuse me, Philly. We saw last year with the Eastern Conference play, and that exactly happened. It was supposed to be Celtics. If the playoffs had no play-in, the Celtics would have played the Miami Heat in the first round. The Heat were the seventh seed. The Hawks were the eight. But the Hawks won that playoff game. And luckily, I mean, didn't really save the Celtics because it allowed that Heat to go on that big run. But it allowed us to not get embarrassed in the first round, possibly, or had that bad juju. Then we got to, you know, cruise by Atlanta, which I was very, very ecstatic about. So we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, things might change. There's still three weeks left to the season. But if a team like Philadelphia or Miami were to fall out of the playoffs in that play-in and a team like Chicago or Atlanta makes it, I'm licking my chops. I'm ecstatic because I think we could beat, as you can see, and last game versus the Bulls, a little bit closer, but we handled them. And, and tonight's game versus the Hawks, I, I think we're chilling. I think there's no issues. The Pacers scored 145 points in a loss. Wow. Wow. And Knicks, tough if healthy, but we have handled them exactly. But... I don't know, man. Their depth is, I think, the second scariest to us because they have guys like Shake Milton who don't get playing time. They still have another open roster spot that they can use because they didn't get Taj Gibson. Uh, Deuce McBride has really, really evolved for them these, these last couple of games. Um, Mitchell Robinson's going to be coming back from injury. Isaiah Hartenstein's one of the best backup bigs, and Tom Thibodeau loves that defense. Josh Hart, guys like Dante DiVincenzo, Jalen Brunson, they're built for that. Obviously, again, OG Ananobi and Julius Randle, I think they're those two teams' X factors. So having them both at 100% definitely dictates the series. But if the Celtics go up against them in any which way where they're fully 100% healthy, I think it could be a good series. Here we go, though. The Hawks come back out, miss a three, get the rebound off the front rim, and get another basket. The Celtics have two offensive rebounds compared to the Hawks' seven. So that's a, a big vocal issue in tonight's game. But it's been an issue this whole entire season, and the Celtics have been able to win games without it. Tatum with a mid-range fadeaway misses. Sam Hauser with the foul. Not really looking like a big-time foul for Sam Hauser there. Like I mentioned, if you guys are enjoying the stream, if you guys are having fun, make sure to hit that like button if you guys are new here. We have 141 total views, which is absolutely amazing. And 10 people. 
currently watching the stream every time we get the stream going more and more people are joining in more and more people are tuning in which again we really do appreciate it so if you guys enjoy celtics content if you guys enjoy that stuff hit that like button make sure to share this channel to as many celtics fans as you know and join the discord to interact with me on more celtics content and even just talk about the celtics casually i think that's just something fun that we can have Celtics having some great big ball movement. Chris stops. Chris stops. Chris stops. Deuce balling. Yeah. Yeah. He has been. And our co-host Isaac here, big supporter of your boy Deuce McBride. Big, big supporter of Deuce. So he's ultra ecstatic about that. Celtics get a foul there, but yeah, Kristaps Porzingis, I mean, Jason Tatum's the scoring leader, has got 23 points, him and Jalen Brown have been on absolute fire, but Kristaps Porzingis, man, the versatility that he brings, the ability that he's able to hit these threes, Peyton Pritchard leading a sister with five, Jason Tatum leading score with 23, and they get that basket to roll in. Another three from Sam Hauser. Misses. Unable to get the rebound there. Celtics getting boxed out on the last couple of positions. Not able to get any realistically second chance points. Which is really odd compared to... Whoa! Which is really odd to what happened in their last in their last game where they really excelled at that. Sam Hauser for three. This time in the corner. Yes, sir! Sam Hauser! Sam! Really one of my favorite players this year as well. Really, the realistically, the reason why I went all wall was DeJounte Murray fell, wanted to get a foul there. And then once he fell, looked like he went to try to trip Jason Tatum a little bit, which kind of scares me. And uh, I don't know. Very, very, very scary. Celtics, 11 for 21 field goals this quarter. They are 10 from 20, I believe, from the three-point range. I just believe I saw that stat, which absolutely fantastic. Jason Tatum to Sam again shot clock expiring Sam missing this is the thing though even though Sam's not hitting these shots they're giving him good looks they're giving him wide open threes in the in the corner so that that goes to show you they trust him they believe in him they know that he can hit these big time shots for the Boston Celtics as Bogdan Bogdanovich gets a steal on the lazy Celtics inbound and they hit a three right now the Hawks trying to spark something here. Down 20 points. They're trying to bring this game back here. Celtics, though, might have, at this point, had a little bit of a too big of a lead into the second quarter. Celtics are not succeeding right now in the last couple minutes. In the last 323 are six points compared to the Hawks' 16. Jalen Brown for three gets fouled. And... Oh, no, we're not going to. I thought we were going to a timeout there. I was going to say, spark some more conversation if we were, but probably Thunder game one of where it's all hands on deck. Good test. You're going to, I I don't know, Jalen Brown with the mid-range misses. Hauser with the rebound. You're, Jimmy J, are you talking about who we want to play in the finals? Um, Jalen Brown off the front rim again for the three misses. Hawks being very slow, driving out this clock in the last couple seconds here. DeJounte to the rack, makes it between Hauser and Porzingis. Good effort from both of the guys there. And Tatum for three, miss Horford with the rebound, but no effort back. The Celtics had a 22-point lead at the end of the first quarter here. Came out on fire in the early second half. But the Hawks have built a little bit of a comeback here. Even though they are still down 18 points. 74-56. The Celtics are heading into halftime here. No Drew Holiday like we mentioned. No Xavier Tillman. No Derek White. So if you don't see them on the court, that is why. Now, 
Jason Tatum, Chris Dobbs, Brazilian, Jalen Brown have excelled in this game so far. A little bit of lackadaisical school defense there. A little bit of rebounding trouble as well with the Hawks getting a, a lot of second chance points. And some of those being big time threes off of offensive rebounds, which has helped them, you know, being able to come back into this game. The Celtics halftime report for me would be to work on getting some more rebounds for the Boston Celtics. I think that is our key issue right now, limiting those second chance points like we did versus Chicago, because that's what kept us alive in those games. Maybe throwing a more a little bit of Luke Cornett out there to be able to get some of those tip passes might be a route that the Celtics are looking to go for in this second half. Let us know your guys' thoughts and opinions in this on this first half and some changes that you would like the Celtics to make for the second half as well. Dwayne says that he thinks that the Celtics are bored. Yeah, it looks like that. And thing is, too, is we need to keep this lead steady and going because we want to see some of our younger guys play tonight. This was a matchup that we rested Drew Holiday and rested Derek White for not necessarily to see those guys, but in the third or fourth quarter, if we were up 30 or 35, we could see those guys and get to see them blossom and i think that guys like jd davidson Jaden springer a guy like jordan walsh i don't believe he's with the team right now nemus kata those guys should get some love tonight and be getting that shine so let's hope that they can you know come back here and you know get some spark in the third quarter so they can show some love to those guys here i'm gonna check out the excuse me we're gonna watch we're gonna look at the box score here so we can break that down for you guys look at the team stats first here Celtics shooting 55% to the Hawks 49 44% to the Hawks 41 from three and 83% compared to the Hawks 50% from three-point range like I mentioned though they do have eight offensive rebounds compared to our three and they have out rebounded us by four Celtics have one more assist two more steals and three more blocks those are playing great on the defensive side with only two turnovers to the Hawks' six, which is big. The Hawks, though, do have more points in the paint, which is not that great. The Celtics' biggest lead tonight was 30 points. They had 22 at the end of the first quarter. Jason Tatum, 23 points, 7 for 12 from the field, 2 for 4 from three-point range with four rebounds and four assists, playing that point guard role. Sam Hauser is starting tonight, 2 for 6 from the field, 2 for 6 from 3 with 4 rebounds and 6 points. Like I mentioned, he's gotten a lot of good looks and opportunities. Hasn't been the most efficient tonight, but the fact that they are letting him let those shots fly shows that they trust Sam Hauser and they're willing to believe in him in situations like this and make sure that gets he gets ramped up and geared up for a deeper playoff run. Al Horford has a total of 5 points, 3 rebounds with 1 big time 3 off a great, fantastic offensive rebound from Kristaps Porzingis who is having an efficient night. Six for eight from the field with a total of 15 points, two rebounds, and one assist. And Jalen Brown, 13 points, five for 12 from the field, two for five from three with two rebounds and one assist. Off the bench tonight, we have three scores. Mihailuk is one for one from the field. Pritchard is two for five with five points and five assists. And Luke Cornett has a total of four points with a, some nice tips in around the basket and a nice little hook-like mid-range shot near the close of the basket. For the Hawks, Hunter and Capella are leading their scoring. Hunter, two for three from field. And like I mentioned, Dion, Clint Capella has been a beast against the Celtics squad. Eight rebounds, 14 points. That is someone that we definitely have to worry about and definitely control for this second half. The Celtics want to keep continuing this push for this win. Like I mentioned, not a key win, not a big time win that the Celtics want, but a, neat, a win that would be exciting to have. Obviously, the Boston Celtics... You know, want to continue this win streak going, want to make sure that they have all these fantastic things happening for this squad. So being able to get to a 10 game win streak and notch another double digit win streak in the NBA and being the team that has had two of them this season and being the only team to accomplish it would just be a crazy stat. Just adds to our legacy, adds to, you know, our resume of proving to the NBA on why our team is so strong, so great, so dedicated and is the contender to win that championship. Obviously, the Denver Nuggets, they're the defending reigning NBA champions. Those guys, you know, are expected to be there, but the Celtics are their best competition. Got a comment here from some other people as well. Like I mentioned, if you guys want to leave your thoughts, comments, what you guys think down below in the comment section, we bring them up here. Got Garrison A saying, got to clamp up back in that third quarter. Exactly. I don't know if you saw that Alabama game from March Madness, but got to lock up. Got to get ready. 
This team needs to beef up. Maybe we throw... I know there's no Tillman tonight, but maybe we throw a little bit of Al Luke out there. Maybe we throw some Kata out there, maybe to disrupt some stuff. Brissett has gotten some shine. Played played some decent defensive stats, but again, Brissett not that you know all offensive guy. And his his stats and his scoring ability and his play on the court is never going to show up in that stat sheet unless he goes off for 50, 20 points. Celtics have recorded their franchise record 17th 70 point first half of the season tonight in Atlanta. That is absolutely crazy. Jason Tatum, 23 points. Kristaps, 15 with two blocks. JB with two steals. Celtics, Jason Tatum with two steals as well. So going to show you that both of these Jays are playing on both the offensive and the defensive side very, very hard. And again, they came out before the season claiming that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown both wanted to make that all-defensive team. Now, do I think that they're both going to make it? Nah, unfortunately not. There's some really great defensive players. They got to add a third defensive team for the NBA just for how great some of these guys are on the defensive side. But I could see Jalen Brown pushing for an all-defensive team. Maybe not the first all-defensive team. There are some other great wings like Herbert Jones, Jaden McDaniels. Um, but I think that he definitely, definitely deserves to be on one of the two teams. Uh-oh. Yes, the Celtics have been playing a fantastic game besides the, you know, last couple minutes here. Should be, you know, a big one. Like I mentioned, we've got 15 current viewers in here, which is absolutely fantastic. I didn't even realize that until just right now. We're at halftime, and I believe this is the amount of peak viewers that we've had. So, like I mentioned, if you guys are enjoying the stream, if you guys are having a good time here with Celtics Digest... With myself, Bruce here. I appreciate every single one of you that tunes in. I know we got people that watch these live streams every single time. But like I mentioned, we appreciate every single one of you. If you guys don't mind, if you guys are here, if you guys are new and you guys do enjoy, hit that like button. To get as many other Celtics fans in here. We're trying to build this great community here on Celtics Digest. If you don't know already, we have a Twitter or X down below in the description of all our videos. You can check that out. We have the community posts and the community pages where we ask you guys poll questions. You know, try to gauge your interest. Try to feel out what you guys are interested in with the Boston Celtics. You can respond to those. We also have a Discord here, a Digest Media Discord, which is just absolutely really a really really cool thing where you guys can interact with myself other digest media creators stuff like that and ask them questions about their team talk about the boston celtics just overall have a great experience we'll be doing some call in live streams as well I keep mentioning i'm going to be testing it out i am going to test it out this week and we'll either see a call in live stream this weekend either on Saturday or Sunday, or we'll see it on Friday. But if that's something that's interests you, make sure to join the Discord so you can be, you know, one of the first people to be able to experience those Collins and get, you know, right in line right away to let us know your Celtics opinions. We're going to let you take the floor, let you give us your thoughts, your praises, and I'll rebuttal back and we'll have back and back conversation. I think it's a great way to, you know, talk to some of our fans and get those people energized and engaged about this squad because, we all love the Boston Celtics here. This is our favorite team. This is the place that, you know, we want to be able to share and just have great conversations about the squad like we have right here from Charles Miller. 118-93, to 93, that's his score prediction for the Celtics. We had a little bit of a score prediction in our last video as well. So like I said, let us know what your guys' score prediction is going to be for the Boston Celtics tonight. And if you guys, whoever gets the closest, we'll give you a little shout out at the end. If that sounds something interesting to you guys, we can start doing that as well. We can give a little shout out here for everybody that gets the closest to the score. Or if, even if you want, in the fourth quarter with the last five minutes, I like this thing too. Maybe we can predict what the Celtics are going to win by. Say if they're up 15 or 20 points with like five minutes left, we can have a little prediction. Will the Hawks bounce back? Will they you know, only win by three points? Or will the Celtics come out and blow them out and win by 25? I think that's a little fun competition we can have as well. Let me see if I can get the Discord link in here as well. Just so I can help you guys out with that. I don't know if you guys can. I'm 90% sure I can do this. But if I try this out here, I should be able to. And then I can do that for you guys. So you guys can just join it regularly. Hoping that this is working. Hoping that this is working. Really hoping that this is still here. 
Ah, yes, we're still here. We're still live. Again, these are my first couple of live streams. Again, they're going to get better every single live stream here, guys. So if you guys enjoy this type of stuff, make sure to hit that like button. And make sure to join here. Tinkus Pinkus is getting bullied down low. Yeah, Quinn Capella is feasting on him. In the first quarter, the Celtics were dominating without Quinn Capella being in there. And that's what they have to prioritize. I think the Celtics... When they see Clint Capella, they're going to prioritize him that three-point range. But when he's taken out, when they're giving him that rest, Bruno Fernando, the ex-Boston Celtic, is in. you got to attack the rim. Do you think Harden will hit two threes? If you're talking about tonight's game, let me look and see who they're playing. It's off the top of my head. I do not know who they're playing. But Harden is playing the Pacers. I would guess that Harden hits two threes tonight. I would bank on it. But I'm going to try this. You guys can let me know if this works. I believe it did. So, here we are. I think that that worked, right? If you guys do see that Discord link in the chat, let me know. Let me know if that did work for you guys. But there you go. That is the Discord link. Like I've been mentioning, a place where you guys can come interact, join, and talk about Boston Celtics content with us. Like, we can break down, have, you know, more informal conversations about the Boston Celtics. I know I try to get to as many comments as I can. I like as many comments as I can. I know we have the comment of the day as well, which highlights my favorite comment, which, again, I appreciate you guys for leaving fantastic comments. Ever since we started comment of the day the last couple of weeks, everybody has been dropping fantastic opinions. And it's so hard to choose from all these brilliant comments because I have comment some days where I'm picking comments from other videos because there's just so many good comments on that video. It's I want to recognize it. It's just, again, something that we appreciate you guys for tuning into. So, you know, sometimes I can't reach every comment. Sometimes I try my best to like every comment that I enjoy. But if I can't respond to you or if you have any more questions or just want to talk Boston Celtics, talk Raptors, want to talk Knicks, want to talk, you know, Habs, Mavericks, join the Discord. It's a fantastic place to have some interaction with some other Celtics fans, other people as well. I really enjoy it. I think it's super, super cool. And like I keep mentioning, that's the place where we're going to be doing the call and live streams. So if you guys want to be able to do the call and live streams, be able to, you know, join the talk, the talk radio, have, you know, a conversation where you get to let us know how you feel about our boss and Celtics, make sure to hit that discord. Because like I mentioned, you'll be the first people in line. You'll be one of the first people to be able to get into that conversation and have those talks with us here. Yeah, we got some more people joining the Discord here. Boston Celtics 17. Don't know you are currently in the stream, but I saw that you joined the Discord earlier today, which is just another fascinating thing to see. We just get it's just hard to tell who's Celtics fans and who's other fans because we do not have, you know, that set up. That's something that I want to get set up as well. So I can be able to tell who are Celtics fans, who not. Wow, we're keep going up on the stream here. Up to tw almost 20 viewers. Thank you to everyone that you know has tuned into the stream so far. We greatly appreciate it. But like I mentioned, we're hitting around 20 viewers and it's halftime right now, which is just absolutely fantastic. So like I keep preaching, if you guys enjoy this stream, if you guys enjoy this commentary, if you guys just enjoy me as a Celtics commentator, I really appreciate you guys, you know, coming in here, hanging out with us, having a good time. It's just, it's halftime right now. We got 20 people in here discussing wanting to talk Boston Celtics. Obviously when the game comes back, we'll have some more conversation about the squad, about the team. Like I mentioned, Celtics need to do a little bit better on the defensive side here as even though we have an 18-point lead, they started to slow down a little bit in those last couple minutes. Clean up those offensive rebounds. Stop allowing a lot of second-chance points and get the job done here. This is not a game to mess around, not a game to fool around with. We need to come out here and secure this 10-game win streak to just prove to the NBA how dominant we still are. And that's, that's what we need to keep doing because there's teams like the Bucks, teams like the Knicks, teams like the Heat, where if the Celtics slip up once and have one little fluke game or they go on a two-game losing streak, everybody in the world freaks out. They throw their hands in the air. Oh, Celtics aren't making it. Oh, Celtics are choke artists. Oh, no, not happening. Look at our clutch stats. Look at our game stats. We have one loss versus a team under 500 this year. We also have one of the best clutch offenses and defense across the whole NBA. But no one wants to mention that. I saw a clip today of Perk on ESPN rambling about the Celtics, how they're not clutch. 
And they showed bench low lights. Sam Hauser shot seven for eight from the three last game, and they showed the one miss he took. That was absolutely hilarious. Just absolutely ridiculous here. Celtics, 55%. From the field, 10 for 23 from 3, 10 for 12 from Fruit, though, which is absolutely fantastic with a 30 point lead. The Hawks, 49% from the field, 7 for 7 from 3 point range, 3 for 6 from the free throw with a Jake Lehman, zero biggest lead. Sorry to the Jake Lehman snub there. Sorry to the little disrespected Jake Lehman. But like we mentioned, if you guys enjoy the stream, if you guys are having fun here in the Boston Celtics chat, if you guys are having a blast talking and watching the Celtics enjoying here, make sure to hit that like button and give us a little bit of a like spike as we want the Celtics to bring back this game and win in the third quarter as we are heating up. Here we go. DeAndre Hunter, easy to the basket. No one in the paint to stop him. Jalen Brown tries to help him out on the backside there, but no one on that side of the block to stop. Absolutely disrespectful. Looking like we did at the beginning of the half, at the end of the half, excuse me. Horford looking to go down low, though. Force Bogdanovich. Nice pass to Porzingis and sloppy pass there. This is not the time. This is not the time. Can't be having this. Can't be having this. Can't be having this. Can't be having this. I think that the chat is not backed up because I can't see any of the chat. So I'm sorry if you're typing in the chat. I'm sorry. Or if you haven't typed in the chat, then it's a okay. Another basket from the Hawks there from Bogdan Bogdanovich. And the Celtics, unfortunately, unfortunately here. Horford fighting down low, getting a nice tough bucket for the Celts there. There we go. There we go, Dad. There we go, Dad. There we go, Al. There we go. There we go. Another three from Bogdanovich, and he's fouled. Peyton Pritchard. Okay, I, did, I just realized this right now. The Celtics coming out with a different lineup than they did at halftime here. No Hauser in the starting lineup. They got Pritchard now starting. So not running that Jason Tatum PG anymore. They've decided to bring in our boy Peyton Pritchard, who has been a fantastic player for the Boston Celtics. Bogdan Bogdanovich misses the free throw there. Got some Lupe A with another Shamrocks. Again, you guys want the Celtics to win if you guys are enjoying the stream. Spam the Shamrock in the chat. Let's get everybody rocking. Let's get everybody having a good time here. 177 total views here in the stream. Again, we appreciate everybody that comes out here. Even if you're here for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, you're here for the whole entire stream. Thank you guys for at least tuning in and having a good time. The more views we get, the more likes we get, the more and more people we get for playoff season. And that's when we want to be full steam ahead and fully locked in with our Boston Celtics here. Celtics looking to get their first or second points of the half here. I forgot that Al Horford got that basket at the rim. Jason Tatum at half court. Looking to do a little size up. Going to go to the rack. Tough finish. Misses it, but Kristaps Porzingis with a nice tip in under the basket. Let's go. Kristaps Porzingis coming up huge for the Boston Celtics there. And another steal for the Boston Celtics. Let's go. Let's go. Let's keep this alive. Come on. Let's keep up this defensive intensity. Let's keep it going. Come on, Peyton Pritchard. Come on, Peyton Pritchard. Let's go. Great defense from Pritchard again. Yeah, he makes that three, but Peyton Pritchard gives the big contest. Brucey e. B, Kid Capri, let's go. Spamming those Shamrocks again. We appreciate you. Thank you for coming out to the stream. DeAndre Hunter, 17 points, 7 11 from the field. Really has emerged with no Jalen Johnson in this starting lineup. Has really gone hot and cold this season. Tatum for three. Air ball. Not the first for Jason Tatum tonight either. Is leading the Celtics in points, but golly. So DeAndre Hunter for three. Long rebound, no one able to get the board, and it bounces to Krejci. We need another timeout. Box out. Box out. Joe is clapping. The Hawks want this more than us right now. Brown to the rack, misses. Three from Krejci. And, oh, no. He went to fake three pass and misses completely. 
Dwayne says he can't stand that show and can't stand Perkins. Yeah, I'm a little 50-50 on Perk. He's a little bit ridiculous sometimes with the Boston Celtics. And we can't have him hopping on this bandwagon once the Celtics start going hot. Pitchered with the missed three. Because you know when the Celtics start winning the playoffs and start dominating, he's like, oh yeah, I was a Celtics fan. We know he appreciates us. He's very, very hard on us, but it's a little ridiculous for the TV sometimes. They want him to be a Celtics hater, which is ridiculous. DeJounte Murray with another tough basket over Peyton Pritchard, and the Celtics' lead is evaporating quickly here. The Hawks are on a 13-4 run to start off the third quarter. They were on a big-time run in the second quarter as well, 16-6 to to end it. So the Celtics looking really scary here. Porzingis for three off the back rim. <sighs> this is not good. This is not good. Vate Krejci for three, and he makes it. Call a time out now, now, now. Oh, my God. And just like that, the 22-point lead is now a six-point lead. Come on, Joe. That's a timeout opportunity. I know you want us to play through it, but... Oh, my God. And great defense by the Hawks there. Again, Murray for three. Wide open. Makes it. Time out. Finally. Oh, my God. Exactly. Joe needs to call a timeout. Joe needs to call a timeout. Oh, my God. That we... <sighs> What's going on? What is going on? This team started off... So cold for three points. The Celtics are on fire. They were doubling the Hawks' points and at the end of the first quarter. We had 44 points in the first quarter. In 12 minutes alone, the Celtics had 44 points. And in the last 22 minutes, the Boston Celtics have scored 10 less as a team. This is atrocious. This is not, not good, guys. This is... This is looking bad here for the Celtics. I I don't know. I'm a little frustrated here. Obviously, as you guys can tell, we need it's not as it's not a big time win. It's not necessary, but this this you can't be having these defensive collapses. And we've and we've seen this too. This is what I call the third quarter collapse because the Boston Celtics, and if you guys have been following the team as much as I've been a fan for me, like I have for the last couple of years, this is what we know. We saw it last year as well. They come out in the first half. They're up 40, 50 points. You think, oh, it's going to be an easy second half. And then the third quarter, that team just erupts, brings the game back. And then the fourth quarter is just a dodgy back and forth game where Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown wakes up in the last five minutes and wins it for us. And that was the whole story and narrative of the team last year. And I thought we changed that. I thought those things changed with this team. But no, it's not changing. The Hawks... Scored 19 points to the Celtics. Four in four minutes. You have a point a minute. This can't be This can't be happening. Upe A says, WTF, exactly, my man. What's, what, what, what's happening? Lock in on the defensive side. OMG, bro, what is happening right now, says T-Snizzle. T-Snizzle, you came back. We appreciate you being back here, but this is the worst possible timing, man. This is, this is awful for us. Awful. We need to wake up out of this slump. Me and Isaac said it last time versus the Pistons. They went in a little slump. They called a timeout. They woke up and they took control of that game. And they never lost it ever since. Can this be that game-changing timeout? Did, can Joe wake them up? Grab them by the head. Shake them a little bit. Dwayne says that he needs to call timeouts, man. See, that's the thing. He wants them to play. He wants them to fight through this. And I totally agree. But a twin, Vic Krejci splashing threes. Gary and Matthews spot like... We were clearly having some offensive issues right there. We need to, we needed a timeout. We should have called, I agree, we should have called it two or three possessions before. Don't let it get to a three-point game. Call it before it's an eight, nine, ten-point game. And let's ride it out. Let's ride it out. Here we are. Peyton Pritchard going to give that pass to Jason Tatum. Hawks are on a 13-0 run right here. Tatum to the rack. And is successfully going to get a foul call here as he's clearly frustrated, as his arms getting locked in by Vic Krejci. Jason Tatum, I'm not going to lie, 
in his early years was definitely frustrated that he didn't get calls. He's gotten calls last year and this year, so it, it's no big issue. But he still is disrespected on the calls as an all-star player, as one of the league's best and most prolific players. As a as a Celtics fan, I'm going to call him a top five player in the league, but some people are going to say that he's a top ten player. Jimmy J, what the WTF just happened, dog? I thought this was over. That's what I was saying. That's what we were preaching at halftime. We thought this game was over. We thought we were going to be able to see the bench squad, see Springer, see... Um, Kata, I, I was ready to take a, take a relaxing night tonight, but no. They got my heartbeat jumping. Great defense, though, from Jalen Brown here. Celtics waking up after this timeout, like I'm saying. Jalen back to the rack. Yes, sir! Jalen Brown. Okay, let's wake up. 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 Come on. Come on. Warm up. Lock in on that defensive side like that last possession. We've been a little bit of lazy, like Dwayne saying. They've been on 70 for the last five minutes. They have been. They haven't been all go, 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 go. You saw in that first two, three minutes with Jalen Brown hitting that big time three, getting fouled. And then after that, being able to get that steal and get that, that layup. Jason Tatum did it as well. Both of these guys had two steals in the first half. Porzingis for three misses. Jalen Brown, big time rebound. Jalen Brown going to the rack. Jalen Brown fighting. Again, no foul call there. He's going to do some smack talk. Definitely deserved. Three from DeJounte. Miss. And Horford with the board. Great box out as well. Great box out. Brown going for the rack. Trying to. Loses, almost loses his dribble. Uh, looking for Porzingis down low. Double team. But great pass to Tatum at the level of the rack. Let's go. Great ball movement there. Let's get that ball movement going. We saw that brilliant play at the beginning of the game. That five-pass play around. Let's keep that going. Let's keep that generating. Come on. Come on. Capella at the rack. Misses this time. Okay. 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 Horford, big-time rebound. Pass to Pritchard. Pritchard taking on the Jets. Nice layup. Great finish. Celtics. Celtics warming up. They're warming up. We turned that up from 70. We're at 85, 90 now. 8 0 run in the last two minutes. That timeout sparked him. That timeout sparked him. Yup. Quinn Snyder needs another one. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Again, if you guys enjoy the content, if you guys do enjoy this stuff, hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button. Make sure to show your support to the Digest family here. Like I keep mentioning, like I keep pushing. We do have the Twitter. We do have the Discord. The Discord should be dropped down here now. I believe so. I can pin it, I think, as well. Don't know how that works, but uh, that, that that's my that's my thing. Yep. So here's the Discord. You guys can, if you want to click that comment, join that link. You guys can join. We can have some chats there. Like I mentioned, the Twitter is you know a, a place that I want to experiment and talk as well. It's very very hard to do during the game because I'm doing the live stream here, obviously. Try my best to, you know, maintain the live stream, talk to you guys, make sure I can watch the game, have some fun, but try my best to, to maintain it all. The Twitter doesn't really get used during the game, but after the game, definitely send out my tweets, definitely get my reactions out, definitely get my, my narrative out, and same thing with, you know, just reacting to the tweets in general throughout the day. If I see anything cool, I'll give my cool react and honest reactions, but yeah, Celtics, Bouncing back a little bit here in that third quarter. Going on a big time lump and lead. And we need to keep that going. We need to keep pushing. We need to do this again. Keep pushing. Keep working for this. Just keep on going. Keep that gas pedal pushed. Keep driving. Let's see how we're doing here. 11 total people. All right. All right, yeah, we, we've been doing solid. We've been fluctuating. Can't believe at halftime we had, you know, the most amount of people here. Must be because everybody was, you know, tuning in at halftime watching the game at home. But, again, like I mentioned, we appreciate everybody that tunes in. We appreciate everybody that comes here, joins, hangs out, has a good time with us. Because, once again, we can't do this without you guys here. We can't be having all this fun without you guys. You guys are the ones that make this channel possible are the ones that allow us to have these type of conversations. You guys see Jonte Porter? Anyone see that? Let me know your guys' thoughts, conversations down below on that. Or March Madness as well. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Anyone got any 
there are any good brackets, any good things alive, anyone's favorite still alive. I got UNC winning my bracket, my bracket that I picked. It's ranked like top 20 million in the world because I had McNeese State in Kentucky in my final four. But, you know, I got UNC winning. They're still alive. We still believe it. Don't ask about McNeese State. <laughs> kind of awful, awful direction I went there. Here we go. We're breaking down. Trey will be reevaluated next week. Maybe we'll get to see Trey come back for this Atlanta Hawks playoff push if they, you know, really want to make one. Which again, I'd be all in favor for. Trey Young comes back, and the Hawks or the Bulls make the playoffs over the Miami Heat or Philadelphia 76ers. You will not hear me complaining. Another three, though, from the Atlanta Hawks there. Pritchard out to Porzingis. Steal from Vit Krejci. And he gets the dunk. Vit Krejci, man. Being a grit and grind nose player for this team today. Porzingis for three. Off the front rim and no one to get the board. If Porzingis, if we're going to run Porzingis and Horford, one of them needs to be underneath the basket. They both can't be at the three-point range just waiting for a shot. And if you're Porzingis, you got to recognize that. Krejci again. Oh, my God. What is going on? That's good defense as well, man. Uh, Peyton Pritchard. Oh, my. Oh, my. Porzingis. Come on. Played some decent defense right there. Come on, guys. Let's wake up. Let's wake up. Let's wake up. Jalen Brown, take over. Come on. Get to the rack. Clink up. Ugh. Good board. Brown gets his own rebound. Goes back up with it. With the pump take on Capella. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. If Capella is pulled out of that paint, we need to be full force just jabbing at it. Jalen Brown scoring on him, too. Like, just attack him. Attack him. Charles Miller's got Houston winning there. They almost had a scary game yesterday versus Texas A&M, but they are definitely a powerhouse in the NCAA. Come on, Celtics, says Lupe A. Exactly. Come on. We need the different here. We need that Spock going. Come on, JB. Let's wake up. As he misses the free throw, come on. Your comment speaks. Uh, this is very hard. Your comment speaks wonders. This is. I should just leave this up until we start tuning it up. This is going to be the, the comment. Lupe's comment is going to be up here as Porzingis is having a bad game. Started off hot in the first half, but recently has not been playing that good. But, yeah, we're going to have Lupe's comment up here. Lupe, we're going to have come on Celtics up here. Hauser for three. Misses off the front iron. We're going to be having that up just as we – people want to come in, people want to tune in. Give us your chats below. But come on, Celtics. Come on, Celtics. Big block by Hauser. Okay. That's what we love to see. People sleeping on his defense. Brissett, high energy guy. Going to set the pick. Bring that spark, Brissett. Pritchard. At the rack. Let's go. Getting little pump fakes. Getting them to bite and jump. Come on. My 6-2 point guard. DeAndre Hunter off the rim. Hauser. Going for that tip to help on the defensive side. Get Luke Cornette to stand up. Yes, sir. He's pumped to see his boy doing his giving us hustle, giving his hustle as Pritchard tries to get to the rack here. Isn't able to score on the mismatch. Drives it back out and then kicks it. We're set back to Pritchard. Pritchard going on another mismatch. Trying to blow by Hunter. Let's go, Peyton Pritchard. Let's go. Keep driving. 11 points, 6 assists. He has 1 in the quarter, but 5 in total. Big defense! Big defense! Let's go! Clint Capella, you are not getting that rebound because Jalen Brown, O'Shea Brissett, and Al Horford are saying, Nah! Nada. Not happening. It's not happening. It's not happening. We need to get Peyton Pritchard on this as well. 
Peyton Pritchard needs to somehow find. We're, we're, we can draw Peyton Pritchard and Sam Hauser right here, and right here. We can have them both inserted, one next to Horford and one over here. Pritchard with some great playmaking. Brown with the ball, trying to get to the rim. Gets it stolen from him, from Bruno Fernando, ex Boston Celtic. Ex-Boston Celtic, ex-Boston Celtic, ex-Boston Celtic. Pritchard, Pritchard, excuse me, six assists leading the game in totals. Something that you love to see. Great pass. Oh, gosh. Wide open three. Horford with a big time rebound, though. Pritchard going to the rack again with the blow by on Garrison Matthews. Peyton Pritchard, six straight points at the basket for the Boston Celtics here. Really showing his new gear, proving that he's not just a spot up shooter. 13 and 6, 6 for 11 on the mismatch down low on Bruno Fernando. He's going to get those points lightly, but it's a okay. Horford to Hauser for three. Misses. Oh. Nice save. We're set with that hustle play. Back to Horford who gets to the rack and gets a foul call. Great hustle play by O'Shea Brissett. Again, O'Shea Brissett. Looking for that putback, trying to get it down, but oh my god. There's been an absolute hustle magnet for these boys. Just gives it his all every time. Really love what he brings for this squad. Just full gas to the pedal, always. Never looks lazy. Jalen Brown for three, misses. Again, though, like he gets fouled, but he's trying to fight to save that rebound. Those are big-time things, big-time plays that you love to see from our guy. Peyton, or not Peyton, uh, O'Shea Brissett. But here we go. Clint Capella, or not even Clint Capella, Bruno Fernando just... Celtics not playing the greatest paint defense here tonight. And unfortunately, we've seen that over the last couple seconds here. Celtics 9 for 23 from the field this quarter. The lead of 7. Peyton Pritchard. Oh my... Oh my. Peyton Pritchard. Let's go. Another tough shot from DeJounte Murray, but Peyton Pritchard. Oh my. DeJounte Murray, 16 and 14. Big time game for him. Pritchard to Hauser for three. Misses. Rebound bait Critchie. Uh, good defense. No foul. Awesome. Awesome. Six point lead as we enter the third quarter. Obviously not what we would love to see after our fantastic first half. Uh, after the first quarter, us being up 22 points, I did not expect a turnaround like this from the Atlanta Hawks, but they outscored the Boston Celtics 34-22 to in the third quarter to cut the deficit from a 22-point lead, from an 18-point lead, to now just a 6-point lead. The Boston Celtics 
did wake up a little bit in that third quarter. Peyton Pritchard really, really turning up for the Boston Celtics when they need it as that spark plug off the bench. Sam Hauser has gotten plenty of opportunities to hit some big time shots, but unfortunately, they just are not following for our guy here tonight. Like I said, let us know your thoughts and comments down below in the comment section here. So we're going to break down some more of them and analyze this game with you guys here. Unfortunately, like we've all known, we want the Celtics to keep excelling. We want them to keep doing better and better. So we would appreciate, you know, them to wake up in this fourth quarter. We need some big time performances from them as this six point lead is Again, like I mentioned, not what I was expecting from the Boston Celtics. We want to look at a little bit of the summary here as we dive into the fourth quarter. Celtics shooting 50% from the field now compared to the Hawks 52, 31% from three to the Hawks 45, and 80% from free throw compared to the Hawks 55. So the Celtics were leading both of those stats at halftime, now losing both of those, only leading in the free throw category. The Hawks have six more assists than the Celtics, seven more total rebounds, Tied on fast break points. Celtics are destroying on the defensive side, though. Seven assists and five blocks compared to the Hawks' four steals and two blocks. But again, Hawks out-rebounding us by three offensive rebounds and four defensive and have one less point off turnovers. Celtics desperately need to work on that boxing out and controlling that under the rim to be able to succeed. Obviously, Clint Capella is a massive force down below for the Atlanta Hawks. He's a big-time contributor for them, so it is going to be a little bit difficult but Kristaps Porzingis, you need to wake up. You need to play some great defense here for the Boston Celtics in this fourth quarter. That is your main mission. Play some great defense. Peyton Pritchard, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, they've really shown that they can play some great offense for the Celtics tonight. Let's lock in on that defensive side. Let's have O'Shea Brissett. Let's have Kristaps Porzingis. We haven't really seen that much of Luke Cornett tonight, but Kristaps Porzingis, Al Horford, O'Shea Brissett. Let's get that team running. Let's get those guys rolling. Let's play that defensive side as Springer. Jaden Springer is in for the Boston Celtics here to start off the fourth quarter. Let's go. I'm ecstatic. Like I mentioned, I wanted to see him in this game. We're just seeing him right now. Celtics were 0 for 9 from three-point range in the third quarter. That's atrocious. As I mentioned, didn't really get to see many of these guys. Now we got Svee, Cornette, and Springer out there with Hauser and Tatum. I look at a different lineup here. Svee looking to pass for Springer underneath the basket, but Springer... The ball goes out of bounds, and he's not able to control it as the Hawks were playing a little hot potato with the ball with the Boston Celtics there. Yep, Jaden Springer coming in as a big-time thing for the Boston Celtics. Help, hopefully can help the Celtics get some stops here. Jason Tatum with a mid-range. Misses Springer with the rebound. Unfortunately, not going to count as a shot clock violation. The ball did not hit the rim in time. But Springer in the right position at the right time. In his first 10, 15 seconds is something that you love to see. Like I mentioned, 12 people in the stream currently, 212 views. We appreciate everybody that's tuned in, hanging out here. Let us know your thoughts down below in the comment section. How you guys are reacting to this game. Bruno Fernando putting Luke Cornett in a spin cycle there. Cornett playing some good defense, but Bruno Fernando some better offense. Tatum for three, misses Cornette, fighting for those boards, getting the tips. Him and Springer unfortunately collide into each other, so that's not that great. And the Celtics are on Joe Missoula's, <laughs> Joe Missoula's face on the TV screen right there is my reaction to, just sourness. Springer playing some great half-court defense, though. Really, really harnessing what they are telling him to do. Play that guard well. Do not let them get by. Just lock up. And he he's willing to do so. Bogdanovich is calling for a screen here. Able to get one. And is able to score in between Cornette and Hauser again. He's having a big time game for them as well. Offensively and defensively. This is not looking good for the Celtics. Only a two point lead here as we head into the fourth quarter. A lead that was as big as 30 and at the end of the first quarter was 22 points has now been completely washed away. Hauser for three misses. Sam Hauser just unfortunately is getting the green light, but it's just not falling for him.
Big time stop there. We get a tip. And the Hawks hit a big time three. The Hawks now have the lead. Their first lead of the night tonight. Versus the Boston Celtics. And they were down 30 points. Luke Cornette gets fouled there completely. Like, this is absolutely ridiculous here from freaking Bogdan Bogdanovich. Luke Cornette with the frustrated face. I'd be messed, I'd be mad as hell, too. Lupe with the with the Shamrocks. Let's get those Shamrocks spammed for a Celtics comeback. Come on, everybody. Let's get hyped up in here. I know we've been a little bit down. I've been a little bit down, but come on. We got this starting six over here, and even though we don't have two of them out there, let's get the hype going. Sfima High Luke for three. Let's get that bench mob going. Sfima High Luke, big time shot there. A guy again, stay ready. He's hit two big threes for the Celtics. Catch and shoot maestro, Sfima High Luke. Great defense from Hauser there as. Bogdanovich makes it over him again. Bogdanovich just on a heater tonight. Jason Tatum wanting a foul call. Lupe says horrendous. Yes, this is very horrendous. Tatum with a mid-range fadeaway. And he makes it for the Celtics there. Big time tough shot from Jason Tatum. Show him who you are, Jason. Let's go. Let's lock in. Let's lock in. Tatum, 29 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. Oh, God, no! Uh, Garrison Matthews, bro! Uh, Washington Wizards legend, Garrison Matthews. Oh, my God. What? It, what? What? What is going on? I have my volume turned off. I don't know what... What just happened? What just happened? I I'm I I'm sorry. I don't know what just happened. I don't have Pritchard and Porzingis are entering. Sfi still out there. I I don't know what this is. Yeah, this is ridiculous. What is going on? Oh my god. And Bogdanovich hits another three point. Uh... The Celtics are now down four points. We had a lead of 30. Like I keep mentioning. And now we're just falling asleep on the defensive side. The Celtics, without their two great defensive backcourt guards, and it's clearly showing tonight. The Celtics just look lazy on the defensive side on some aspects. Not really trying, not really pushing, not really wanting to get this. And it's crazy to see. You can see it in their effort. Like Dwayne has mentioned in the past, I'm going to pull up his comment once again. I'm going to see it. It might take a second for me to find it here, Dwayne. But I do want to mention it again because you brought up the fact that the Celtics are playing. I can't find it at the moment, sorry. But you did mention that the Celtics are playing at a 70% pace. And they have been for a majority of this contest here. Besides that first quarter, they really looked bored. They really looked like they didn't want to continue to play anymore. And then the Hawks have just said, oh, you don't want to play? You don't want to try? All right, we'll disrespect you. We'll start hitting our threes. We'll be going like this. This is just absolutely ridiculous here. I, I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely frustrated. Again, I'm, I'm not worried. We can easily bounce back here. You know, in these last eight minutes, we can go on a little bit of a run. But our first half, I would say not even first half, because in the first half they started to come back a little bit. Um, our first, like, 15 minutes were maybe solid, and then ever since is ridiculous. What is happening is correct. Maybe I should change my score. Um, 
you you are not you are not wrong. You are not wrong. We had 118 to 93. 118 to 93 would I don't yeah that, that I don't think that's possible because the Hawks have already passed that unfortunately, but yeah no white no holiday, really been really hard to you know control this offense. We saw Peyton Pritchard kind of take a little bit of a role. Jason Tatum wanted to be that playmaker, but uh, this is just I don't know. This is ridiculous. Playing too casual. Like Keith Smith just says, I just saw his tweet. Playing way, way too casual here. Not giving it our all. Again, the Hawks, a team with no Trey Young, a team with some playoff playing aspirations. They want to win this game. They want to prove, hey, we can beat the Celtics at home. We can we can take these guys down. And the Celtics are proving, hey, we don't really care if we lose in Atlanta right now. Let's wake up, come out of this timeout. Come on, Jason Tatum. We got Pritchard back in here with Tatum, Porzingis, Springer. No Cornette anymore. Big time board to Sfee. Going to dribble to the rack, not not actually catch and shoot. Pritchard to the rack, though. Gets the jump from Matthews. Going to get the foul call. Thank you. Peyton Pritchard's been baiting these guys tonight. Really getting them with the pump fakes underneath the rack. Because, again, like I mentioned, catch and shoot guy, guy who can dribble, guy who can play make. has done a lot for this Celtics team and changing his perspective on a lot of people in the last couple of days. But... Now that people know that he's going to be driving to the rack and wanting to score on him, he's changing it up. He's getting them for the little bite face, getting a little pump fake. They're jumping over him. He's getting the clear as day foul. Oh, no. Pritchard, you can't be missing free throws either, my dude. Oh, no. No. You're supposed to be our one of our best. No, this can't. No, no. No, we missed another. Oh, my God. No, no. <laughs> the 100% free throw is biting us in the butt. What is going on? Let me get this comment back up here. I'm, I'm finding this comment again. I'm bringing you back up here. You're getting your comment again. You're getting your... You're getting your... Where is the, where's this come on Celtics? Here it is. Lupe, you're getting your comment back up here. What is going on? Come on, Celtics. Come on, Celtics. Lock up on that defensive side. Play some good defense here. Porzingis, Porzingis. Yeah, we got a travel call. <laughs> got a travel call. We got a travel call. That's what we need. That's what we need. That's what we need. 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 T Snizzle, we choking, and that's a great time to put the G League bench on. <laughs> yeah. They want to throw out. Well, Svee's been hitting his shots, so that's why they threw him out over Hauser. Charles just wants a one-point win. Charles, we just want any type of win. Exactly, my guy. We're just rooting for something. We're rooting for a little bit of a comeback here. Never, if you asked me at the beginning of the stream if I'd be rooting for a comeback, yeah, I'd be delusional. This is absolutely ridiculous. And the thing is, is we got Atlanta back on Thursday night too, guys. We have Atlanta again this week, so. <sighs> clearly they, clearly they, they want to win. Great finish at the rim by Tatum getting a rebound again. Something that we need. Something that we need. Something that we need is a rebound because we have not been doing that. Good defense from Horford. Oh, my God. Get the rebound. Bruno Fernando should not be out rebounding us. Oh, my God. Bruno Fernando revenge game versus the Celtics. Jeez. Jalen Brown. Mid-range. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's go. Come on. Speed up this tempo. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Good defense. Good defense. Springer. Springer, 
Get to the rack. Okay. 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 Yep. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's wake everybody up. Let's wake everybody up. Come on. Come on. Let's wake everybody up. It's heating up. It's heating up time. Springer's making baskets. Let's use that as motivation. Come on, Jason Tatum. Come on, Jalen Brown. Springer can make a basket. I can make one. Springer can make one. Right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's get the towel waving. Let's get everybody going. Like I mentioned, we got the different here towel. We got the, the towel here from opening night at the TD Garden this season. Let's get it going. Let's get everybody in the chat going. Come on. Let's spam some shamrocks for the Celtics. Let's get everybody pumped up. I know that we're about. it's been a back and forth game, but... Let's get everybody going here. Let's get everybody jammed up. Let's get everybody hitting that like button. Everybody jammed up in here. Having a good time. We have to score here. It might just be over. Yeah. We got we got those baskets, though. We got those baskets. Got to keep fighting. Got to keep fighting. Springer, again. In the time that we've seen him, we've seen him very, very small. He made some big-time impacts. Big time impact. Jaden Springer is amazing. Yeah, we know that. This is free throws is something that needs to be worked on. That's that's something I need to preface here. Something that needs to be known. If you are a Celtics fan and you don't think this, Joe Missoula, my one and only complaint is free throw, free throw, free throw, free throw, free throw. I want my boys taking 100 free throws before practice. I want them taking 100 free throws after practice. I want them simulating game life situations. Put Jason Tatum on Jalen Brown one-on-one -on -one in practice. And let JB or JT foul the other guy. Let them try to get the tough and one finish. Again, I don't go to practices. I don't see that type of stuff. They could be working on that type of stuff. But that's something I want to see. Because these playoff scenarios, situations like this, we need to hit free throws. That's our catalyst. Offensive rebounds, free throws, and turnovers have been our three catalysts all season long. Turnovers, this game... Eh, Started to come up a little bit in the third quarter, but they've been they've been all right. The offensive rebounding is a big time issue. It's something that we're not going to fix overnight. Something that's not going to get fixed this season. It just needs to be polished and worked on every single individual game. And like I mentioned, the free throws has been a glaring issue since the beginning of the season that we need to work on, and it's still an issue now. And when we get deeper and deeper into the playoffs, if we're not making those free throws. We're going to lose games because of that. Good defense here from the Celtics. Good defense from Porzingis with a big-time block. Horford with a swap, but again, nobody to get the rebound. Hunter gets the ball and gets a three, but the Celtics are able to get that rebound. Unfortunately, though, allowing that offensive rebound, allowing them to get that three-pointer off is what we don't want to see. We can't have that. Jason Tatum here. Back out to Porzingis. What a pump fake is with a deep three. Tatum for three. Miss. Oh, my God. The threes aren't falling, gentlemen. They're not sinking. Take it to the basket, please. Oh, and Jaden Springer with a stupid foul. Not, on, not, not like him stupid, but a dumb foul called. Here we go. Let me fill this up off camera and get some more this raspberry pure life not sponsored but powered by if there is no raspberry iced tea we would not be able to to sit here and talk for multiple hours <clears throat> like i mentioned if you guys enjoying the game if you guys got any thoughts or anything like that let us know in the comment section to the 235 people that have tuned in most people have watched around five minutes, so we appreciate that. The 14 likes, the eight concurrent viewers. Thank you guys so much for hitting that like button, tuning in, having a good time with us. Jalen Brown with a tough mid-range makes it. Let's go. Okay. 
Let's keep it fueling. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's keep this fueling. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it running. Spam some clovers in the chat. Let's get everybody rocking in here. Let's get everybody hyped up for this comeback. We need you guys hyped up as much as I am to instill this. Great defense there from Springer. Great. Yeah. Jaden Springer, man. Jaden Springer, man. Let's go. Let's go. Make an impact for the Celtic squad. Again, true definition of stay ready. This guy has gotten the least minutes besides Jordan Walsh and still making impacts when they need him in close games. Big time steal. Tatum to Springer for three. Oh, miss, but Jalen fight. Oh, Jalen, keep fighting. It's okay, JB. It's okay, JB. Keep fighting for those rebounds. We love that effort. We love that energy. Smart would be loving that. He'd be all over that. Again, 237 people. Currently eight people in here. We've been here since 730. That's even crazier. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in here. I know we got our, our usual guys like Charles Miller, T. Snizzle in here most of the time. Jumpy J. Dwayne has been in here most of the time. Uh, Lupe A as well. You guys have been huge supporters of the stream tonight, so we greatly appreciate you guys. Springer with some great defense as well on DeAndre Hunter. More incredible defense. Going, how is that a foul? Whoa! Let's rewatch that, because Jaden Springer is jumping like this. Like this. Strand hand straight up. Hand straight up. Hand straight up. Hand straight up. Uh, and there he goes. He's done. Great job, Springer. Give some clovers in the chat for Springer here. True definition of stay ready. Again, guy who is so low on the Celtics roster. Gets his glim glam in here and there. Two minutes, 30 seconds. Again, tonight. Played what? Two or three minutes for the Celtics here. Gave it his all. Gave it his 100%. Did some work on the defensive side. Scored a bucket at the rack as well. Look at him cheesing with Tillman over there. Having a good time. Like, oh yeah, good job. You got your minutes. Having a little crack. Love that. You love that. Poor Zingas. Celtics working the ball. Tatum now. Tatum taking a little bit slow. Celtics are tied. Tatum to the rack. Ooh! Jason Tatum! Stand up! Jason Tatum! Big time dunk. Get that board. Get that board. Yes, Pritchard and Brown. Let's go. Big time dunk by Tatum. Great pass. Porzingis! Oh, he gets fouled. Porzingis! Great pass from Tatum across the court. But Tatum, big time dunk! Boom! Oh. Jason Tatum, big time dunk right there. Oh, let's go. It's that guy. Let's go. Let's get everybody hyped in the chat. Let's get hyped. Jason Tatum playing that point guard role tonight. Being that star. Disappeared for a little bit, but hey. Big time. Oh, give me that. We got to get a mini hoop in here. Got to get a mini hoop in here. We get that mini hoop. We could be taking some trays like Jason Tatum dribbling through the legs, having a little swing, swing. Post fade away. But yeah, man, oh man, that was a big time dunk. Let's go. That's what we love to see. That's what we love to see. Boom! Jason Tatum again, man. Again. Really, really coming through for this Celtics squad. 
has been a dominant force as well. Like I said, if you guys enjoy the streams, if you guys enjoy everything, oh my god. Yeah, I don't blame you, T-Snizzle. I'm going to turn my volume for this. Let's see. Oh. Okay. Celtics ball, hopefully still. <laughs> That's what we're hoping from Scal. Ha ha ha. Wait, what does this say? Hawks challenge is successful. Celtics will get the ball. Okay, so no points. Yeah, Jason Tatum. Wow, we. Wow. Absolute thunderous slam. Check it out on Twitter if you missed it. Absolutely ferocious. Big time dunk. And again, Jaden Springer showing up big tonight for the Boston Celtics on the defensive side. Celtics kind of waking up here in the second, the second little volt here. Again, getting outscored in this quarter, but still holding on to that lead. Hauser six points, Horford seven, Porzingis seventeen. Been kind of quiet since that first half on the offensive side. But Brown and Tatum, Tatum thirty three points. Absolutely killing it. Seven rebounds, five assists. Jalen Brown, 21 points. Peyton Pritchard again, five, 15, four, and six. Just killing it. And Springer, dude. Springer is just showing his flashes. He's he's just giving us some little light. And it's a little light here and there. But, man, if he can be that Marcus Market comparison that everyone's hyping up to him, I'm ready to go. I'm locked in. Here we go. Celtics back. Three-point game. Let's get the fire in the chat. Let's get everybody hyped up for the Boston Celtics here. Want a big time W from our squad. So if you guys are ecstatic, make sure to be hitting that like button. But here we go. Jalen Brown taking it a little bit slow here. Celtics trying to drain some clock. Goes to the rack. Goes for the floater and is fouled. Jalen Brown will be at the free throw line shooting to some big clutch free throws from Jalen Brown here. A guy who has struggled from those free throws. So we need these Jalen B. We need these clutch shots. Again, shout out to everybody that's tuned in to the 240 people, the 12 concurrent again. Shout out to you guys for joining us here tonight. JB makes the first free throw. That is huge for the Boston Celtics here. Absolutely crucial for this team. Here we go, another one from JB. Ugh, and he misses it. Can't be having that. Bogdanovich here, looking to size us up. The guy that's been able to kill the Celtics in the last couple games here. They get to the rack. Yeah, this is this is awful. This is just not not what I what I'd be liking to see here. Another call. Hunters at the rim here for the Hawks. We make the first free throw. <sighs> Josh Hart apparently played a good game for the Knicks. When does he not? Here we go. Another big time make from Hunter. The Celtics only up one here. Here we go. Here we go, Celtics. 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 Tatum. Yes, sir. Jason Tatum. Tough finish. 35 points for your boy JT tonight. Clearly putting the Celtics on his back. 
right? We got some more, some more fouling problems here. Hawks trying to bait us. Uh... <laughs> Not what I want to see. Oh my god. Again, not the biggest hater on officiating, but recently, man, not even just with the Celtics, but recently, man, it's getting ridiculous. Just necessary, not, yeah, ball don't lie. Oh my god. Poor Zingis! Oh my god, big time block. Oh my god, that keeps us in there. That keeps us alive. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, Tatum! No, no, no! No! Bug. Donovich, no! Oh my god. Come on, we need a bucket here. We need a bucket here. We need a bucket here. JB, JB, JB! Let's go! Let's go! We need that basket. We needed that basket there, guys. We needed that. JB with a nice finish. Oh, my God. Oh. Saw DeJounte Murray finish that over Al Horford. I was just in the thing. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on, Porzingis with the screen for JB, please. JB for three, off the rim, Pritchard's fighting for it, no. No. Oh, Capella with the board to Hunter. Oh, no. Well, I, I don't even know what to say. That's so deflating. So, so deflating, guys. As you guys can see, you know, you can see from the scoreboard here, you can see the Celtics had 44 points in the first quarter to the Atlanta Hawks, 22. We are doubling their point totals. And then every quarter since the Hawks have been able to outscore the Celtics, 44 to 30 in the second, 34 to 22 in the third, and the Celtics 20 points now in the fourth compared to their 30. The Celtics taking a steep Steep decline on the offensive side of the ball every quarter. And the Hawks just giving more hard on the defense, hitting their threes. The Celtics playing lazy, lazy defense on stepping up in some of these occasions, prioritizing the rim. And like T. Snizzle said, bro, we, that's what we're thinking, my guy. Absolutely ridiculous. This is awful. We got nine seconds left here. So we could see a comeback, but this is egregious. Jason Tatum showed up tonight. Not having the point guards, I guess, really hurt us. Not having these point guards really, really hurt us. I mean, Derek White, Drew Holiday, big-time key playmakers for this squad setting up. Jason Tatum did a fantastic job in trying his best, but Jason Tatum gets to the rack here, goes underneath... No way. No, get the board, Horford. Our, get the in. Get in. Oh, my God. Five-second chance. Freaking tippy taps. Jesus. 
Lupe A. Well, yeah. Well is correct. This is... We have we have no sad emotes, unfortunately, or else I'd be spamming the crying emoji. Because this is... Oh. Terrible boxing out. Terrible rebounding tonight from the Boston Celtics. And very, very lackadaisical defense at some points. You see a lot of sloppy offensing with the passing. We saw that tonight in this matchup tonight. Again, could be credit to no holiday. Could be credit to no Derek White really setting up this offense here. But Pritchard, I mean, had some great playmaking, had some great plays. But they just been able to jump the Boston Celtics on a bunch of steals. Kind of read and predict where they're going to run their offense through. And that's not good. Like we were talking about. The beginning of this video we were saying oh we want to play the hawks oh we want to play the bulls and if we can't even finish a game like this this is ridiculous man this is terrible worst case scenario for the celtics here again dominating from shooting percentages and just dropped totally Dwayne can't stand the guys talking on tv Dwayne, what what channel are you watching the game on? are you watching nbc sports boston are you watching um the Atlanta Hawks uh, way of watching the game. How are you watching it? I personally like Scal and Drew Carter. I think they do a solid job for NBC Sports Boston, but I don't know where you're watching the game from. I usually watch it from there because I don't like the ESPN reporters and how they handle things. Here we are. Hawks going to inbound. Celtics need a steal here to, you know, keep this alive, keep this win up, but... And they're just going to pass it back court and dribble it out. And there's the game! <sighs> Wow, that's embarrassing. That's... I don't even know what to say, guys. I'm... I'm frustrated. Like Dwayne Dodson says, 31 games up on them. Last Petrie says, last year, Bruins and 16-0 and Patriots. I don't think it's that bad. I think that we have, obviously, some things to work on. Tonight... Main issue, no peak playmakers with the point guards being in there. And as Dwayne has mentioned multiple and multiple times, I can't I'm not I can't find the message, but he messaged that the Celtics are playing at a 70% pace. And they did that. They showed that multiple times tonight in this matchup here. Let's see if we can uh pull up the box score for you guys here. Get that action going. So we can look at some team stats and kind of give you guys a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a breakdown here, as you guys can, you know, see some stuff. Let's see if I can, uh, if I can do that for you. Um, there we go. Let's see, let's see what we can do here with the window capture. Like I mentioned. See if we can pull this up and okay unfortunately I'm having troubles with that so I'm just gonna pull it up on my phone here as we can see and break it down I'll pull the chat back up here let us know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Yo, I actually left like halfway through the second and came back like 10 minutes ago. WTF happened. Man, they couldn't box out, could not play defense, could not get rebounds. Played very, very lackadaisical defense towards the end of the game. They obviously allowed this team to come back in here. Martin, unfortunately, the Celtics just, you know, yeah. Like like Charles Miller saying, no lead is safe. We've seen it plenty of times before. We saw with the Cleveland Cavaliers being up 20 in the fourth quarter. It evaporated like that. We saw with the Milwaukee Bucks. We had a big lead versus them. Luckily, we came up through in the clutch with the Jays. But tonight, it just was not our night. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown gave it their best. But no Drew Holiday, no Derek White. And just not giving it their all their whole entire time. The Celtics started off with 44 points in the first quarter. And every single quarter after that just kept dropping in points 30 points 28 points or 22 points and then finished with 22 more though 
like I mentioned, we're going to go over the team stats for you guys here. Sorry that I'm able to pull them up, but the Celtics, 49% from the field compared to the Hawks, 53%. A whopping 29% from three after starting off in the first quarter, 50%. So that's your key right there. Running the Missoula ball, trying to get our shooters hot, make sure that they can find their options, get those shots to fall. They just were not happening. The Celtics also from the free throw line shot 68% from the field. The Hawks did shoot worse, but they have some terrible free point shooters, free throw shooters. The Celtics should be beating them in that category. Out rebounded by five points as well. Two more offensive rebounds, three more defensive, nine more assists. The Celtics did have more steals and blocks. They did play good on the defensive side to, you know, keep us in there. But unfortunately, just not that great. Celtics had six more points in the paint. But if we want to look at the box score, Tatum had 37, Porzingis 17, Jalen Brown 24, Pritchard 15 off the bench. But besides that, Svee had six. Springer looked solid, but Cornette didn't get that much shine. O'Shea Brissett didn't get that much shine. And guys from the Hawks were hitting their threes. DeAndre Hunter, 50%. Bogdan Madonovich, 50%. Vit Krejci, 50%. Garrison Matthews, 60%. Wes Wesley Matthews, 66%. Th that's what's going to happen with this Hawks squad. If they can outshoot us, they can outbeat us at that. And the Celtics weren't being able to score in the paint and keep up the game up to par with the Hawks because they were getting threes compared to the Celtics twos. And it just did not work, unfortunately. Again, like you guys mentioned, thank you, Lupe A. Good stream, though. Appreciate you tuning in here. Appreciate you, you know, coming in and hanging out with us, regardless if you were here from the start of the stream or joined halfway through. I saw you commenting down below. I appreciate your support. T Snizzle says, good night, y'all. And Bruce, I'm seriously worried if we do this in the playoffs, it's a case we're not beating anyone. I don't know, man. First of all, T Snizzle, I want you to have a great night again. Thank you for tuning in. We greatly appreciate your support here on Celtics Digest. You're always dedicated, always here for the streams. But again, yeah, it's it's definitely something that we need to work on. Free throws, offensive rebounds, turnovers, and fourth quarter collapses. The four Celtics kryptonites, something we desperately need to work on. Charles Miller says, okay, again. oh, sorry, Charles Miller. Get back to you in Emmanuel in a second, but he says good stream as well. Thank you again, Charles Miller, one of our other, you know, very passionate streamers, guys that always tunes in. Again, we appreciate you guys' support building up the community here. We're seeing new people come to the streams every single time, new people commenting, new people staying. So, again, we appreciate you guys always tuning in. Emmanuel Tavares says embarrassing, saying, how can any Celtics fan feel confident with this team going into the playoffs? I can feel confident for a couple of reasons. Now, one and one reason only is the Celtics were playing without both of their technically starting point guards in Derek White and Drew Holiday. And I know that I've hyped up Peyton Pritchard. I've given him his flowers. He's been fantastic. I've said that he could start on a plethora of other franchises. And he did do his work tonight for the Boston Celtics. Around six to seven assists, 15 points, getting some rebounds, doing it all. But the Celtics technically only having one playmaker, one play creator, one guy to get the offense ready and started is what's gonna hinder them. We've seen that. Jason Tatum played point guard tonight. Didn't look that bad, had some assists, was scoring, but not his strong suit, not the preferable area that he wants to be playing, not his play style is setting up the offense and getting it ready. Tatum's going to play a little bit iso ball dominant, he's going to want to get his shots up, he's going to want to get his buckets, same thing as Jalen Brown. So not having that true playmaker in this starting lineup and setting up these plays has shown the Boston Celtics some, some weakness. We also saw that in the games that we lost back-to-back -back versus Cleveland and Denver. We were using Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum as more playmakers, trying to utilize that, and it was not working. Running the ball through Derek White and Drew Holiday is what makes the Celtics succeed. And I think that tonight, it just proved a little bit more how influential Derek White is to this offense, is to this defense, and how consistent of a player Derek White is for this squad. He might not be the best three-point shooter every single night. He might not be, you know, the best offensive player in some aspects. But he averages a block and a steal and will get the Celtics in a little bit of runs. He saved the Celtics in their matchup on Saturday, hitting two big-time threes in the clutch. And he has that clutch gene. So having him without us tonight was a clear indicator. Now, obviously, not everything falls onto Derek White. You gotta trust the Jays. You gotta believe in our true superstar players. So that's what you have to be worried about. But hopefully, it will be a okay. Mayor Sports says, Boston let me down. Sorry that Boston let you down tonight. They let us down as well. But like we mentioned again, Celtics, fortunately, have blown some of these leads. But 
We did clinch the first seed in the Eastern Conference. We have home court advantage for the playoffs. And we can have a fluke game like this in one of the series, as only if it's one game. Because we have home court advantage, we can lock things up. Like I mentioned, Clint Capella was an absolute beast in the paint, handling the Celtics in the rebound compartment, being able to box out. Christoph Porzingis tried his best, but it was unable to get done. Charles Miller says, let's hope our guys are back soon. That's what I'm preaching about. Believe that Derek White was just a rest night tonight. Wanted to give him a little bit of rest after playing five games in the last seven days, totaling those two back-to-backs versus Washington and Detroit, and then on the other end with Detroit and Chicago. I would expect him to be active on Thursday. Now, Drew Holiday, there's been a lot of, you know, misconception, some words thrown out there. I've seen Drew Holiday out indefinitely. That's definitely not the case. Drew Holiday is A-OK. He came out, said today that he's perfectly fine. It's a little bit of a shoulder sore, but he's going to work through it. He got shot up, up today. He got shots up versus Chicago. He'll be A-OK. Rest him a little bit. Get him ready to go. Maybe not playing this week versus the Hawks, but expect him to be in the running in the next week. And then obviously the last week of the season, we'll get to see all the starters rest as the Celtics will be, you know, preparing to, you know, get some of these big time wins over some of these lesser opponents. Now, like I mentioned, I want to appreciate you all for tuning into the stream. We're going to be wrapping up the stream. As you guys know, the game is over. Fortunately, the Celtics did fall short 120 to 118. But like I mentioned, I appreciate everybody that comes out into the stream, everybody that chats in here, everybody that had a good time for us tonight. I know Charles Miller, Martin, Dwayne, T. Snizzle, Jimmy J, Lupe A. You guys were big, big contributors. DB was here for a little bit as well as I scroll up in the chat. You guys were big. And even John Carthy. Don't want to forget him. He was here in the beginning. But again, big contributors to our success here. Big contributors and getting all these people tuned into these streams. So like I mentioned, I can't thank all of you guys so much enough for sticking with us tonight and enjoying this game. Even though it was a loss, you guys powered it out. You guys hung out with us. And that's what we appreciate. Like I mentioned, we have Celtics Twitter as well. If you want to get some updates over there, I'll be tweeting after the game, giving my thoughts. The Celtics don't play again until Thursday. So if there are any updates, we'll have them over there. We also post some updates on our community page on the YouTube channel. So make sure to check that out as well if you guys are not subscribed. I also linked the Discord down below in the comment section of this live stream. So if you do guys want to check out the Discord here, interact with me, talk about the Boston Celtics, talk about the NBA, talk about the Raptors, talk about the Mavericks. Make sure to check that out as well as would greatly, greatly appreciate it. We're going to be starting those live call-in streams shortly, and I'll be able to break those down for all of you. Like I mentioned, I appreciate everybody tuning out and joining us, even though the Celtics did come up short, not able to get that 10-game win streak. We did see some big-time performances from Peyton Pritchard, Jason Tatum, and from Jaden Springer, who showed us some great light tonight for the Boston Celtics. The Celtics will look to get revenge on Thursday night as they take on the Hawks once again this week after taking a two-day rest. And that rest will be necessary for the Boston Celtics as we'll get to see some of our starters come back in. Thank you, Charles Miller. See you in the next game as well. Signing off here for the Boston Celtics live stream watch along. If you guys want to check out any more of our content, check out the links in the descriptions down below. We also will be, you know putting out a video after this as well, breaking down the game. So you guys make sure to stay up to tabs on that. And I'll catch you guys in the next live stream. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.